Players on the track, track, track. Welcome to uh, Untitled uh, Podcast. We don't know the name of it yet. If you help us, I don't even know. I don't even know why we don't have a title for real. Yeah, we have two working titles. Yeah, I wanted to be like hood loving or something because I'm because we gonna have to review plug loving at some point. <laughs> it's gonna happen because I know you're gonna fucking go bonkers on that shit. I so that's why I, that's why I wanted that's why I want us to review it. Yeah, I still haven't watched this plug loving, but the title itself makes look, me want to look, tune in. Amazon is the new home. Of the hood black films. Yo, I went down a wormhole one night and watched like 50 hood trailers. <laughs> Literally. It was like 50 of them. I was All sitting right. there like, dang, this is real bad. But I might want to watch this at some point. So if you look at, if anybody looked at I wish that they had like the sharing thing where you could, and I wish Amazon and Netflix would do it where you could share like your friend, like have your friends and see what they watching too. Mm-hmm. You can get like recommendations. Mm-hmm. If you look at mine, you would just see just hood like master p covers just all across my <laughs> my saved movies so uh, on out of these uh all of these trailers you've watched mm-hmm. what else sounds interesting to you oh man uh, the uh it's a pimp movie with uh the dude uh shawty what's my name the dude shawty what's my name the dude uh from Wild and Out, Shawty, what's I don't my watch name? Wild and Out, man. It's, he's one of the, oh he's a short dude he got the little annoying voice okay. Look, I don't know. And he he look, he's annoying though, and I was like he's looking at serious roles of pimp, and it intrigues me for some reason. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> it intrigues me for some reason. Like I want to see him be a pimp. What's the name of this film? I have no idea, but all I have right. it saved under my uh, my wish my watch list. Okay, you just need to like send a screenshot of your watch. That's list. what I need to do. Maybe just Amazon hood. They should just actually cu- let me curate it for them. Mm-hmm. Amazon. Just make it a hashtag. Look here, man. Amazon Hood Films, man. Look. And I don't know if Amazon's giving the better deals or something. Because at first, Netflix had a good string of Hood movies, mm-hmm. movies though, for a while. And then he just let us go. It's hard to find <laughs> good Hood flicks on uh, on Netflix now. They got all bougie. They got their own content now. And that's why Amazon probably pushing it, because they ain't got that much con- as much content as Netflix. they like, you got a movie? Put it on there. Right. <laughs> if you get 100 hits, we'll give you $5. Yeah. <laughs> hey. So sometimes I just try to watch like five minutes of it, try to get them a little bit of money, and then I get off of it. I'm like, this is kind of bad. But Plug Love is good. Okay. And we will have to review that at some point. All right. Point. All right. But we have two different ti- um, titles or uh, this show. Um, what were we call What was it? Um, book. Uh, the Movie Club. Movie Club. And the Film, the film crew. crew. So let us know what y'all think with LandoCalPod at gmail.com. Let us know. But this episode, we will be reviewing the movie Black Klansman from Spike Lee with uh, Denzel Washington Jr. in it. Uh, um, (laughs) Or Don David Washington. Mm -hmm. But I call him Denzel Washington Jr. Mm -hmm. As well as uh, Adam Driver and Topher Grace. Yeah. And as well as uh, the sister. um, What is her name again? I lost her name now. Laura Harriet. Laura Harriet. Yeah. Yep. Um, So we're going to do out of five stars. What you got, uh, Raven? All right, out of five stars, I, I wish we were doing it out of ten. Okay, I we can feel, do it out of ten. We can okay, do it, let's do. We could do it. What is, if we're gonna do we, whatever we do now, we got to keep going forward. Okay, so, how about so I? How about I, I do both for now? So out of out of five, I would give it a three. Ooh. But I feel like that doesn't give it as many points as I would if I had ten. So, so if, I, it was 10, if, if it seven. was ten, I would say six and a half. Okay. So either way, um, you know, you know, better than a. I don't know. I guess if we're talking about school grades, it's better than a D. So Ooh, if, we're t- if we're talking like about school minus? grades, no, I would give it. I would give it a C plus. Okay. Okay. Um, and it's kind of like Birth of a Nation, where I don't want to be that one forced into thinking that it's awesome just because I like the idea and the story. Okay. Um, Because I love Ron Stallworth's story, even though I haven't read his book. Um, I've done a little bit more research about him after discovering this story from this movie. Uh, But the film itself was a little bit disjointed for me, uh, which is why I give it the lower score. And then it seems like Ron Stallworth's story is actually more interesting. Mm. And I feel like 
I mean, Spike Lee is great. He's creative, but he's definitely been hit or miss for me. Um, and I feel like maybe if he had involved some more writers, he probably could have used Ron Stallworth's real story and made it really interesting. Because it a lot of it is fabricated. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's like Ron Stallworth's story in itself didn't really need any fabrication. And I think with Spike kind of going off script, you could see that. He didn't write it, though. Who wrote it? Um... I know Jordan Charlie Peele helped uh, wa- out. Charlie right? Wachel, David Rabinovitz, and Kevin William. Gotcha. Well, whoever. Oh, wrote and it. Uh, Spike Lee too. Spike Lee's on it too. Okay, and I thought that he like <laughs> he uh, consulted Jordan Peele as well. Really? I could be wrong. Oh no, he, I think Jordan Peele's the executive producer on it. Gotcha. I believe okay. so. I believe so. Either way, see. all of these brilliant people, I feel like could have gotten together and come up with something a little bit more cohesive. Um, and I know th- yeah, Jordan Peele's a producer. One okay, of the okay, and and it seemed like maybe they wanted so badly for there to be this cheer moment at the end of it, which is fine, I guess. But I don't. I could have done without the whole ending line of the white bread crack up, blah blah blah. I could have done without all of that, especially since like that's not what happened at all. Um, but we kind of c- can go through, yeah. you know, the film from beginning to end. But that's the reason for my lower my lower score. I'm gonna give it a three and a half, four stars. Um, I liked it a lot. It was um, Spike Lee being Spike Lee, you know. Um, I, I was mad almost at one point I, until the last scene with my favorite shot, his dolly, his famous dolly shot. He finally got, he finally put that bitch in there at the end. Mm-hmm. Like, nah, you know I won't go do this whole movie without my dolly shot, right? Uh-huh. And I was Somebody like, okay, has to float. Somebody's got to float across that room. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Um, and he's got some great, I think I think somebody has on YouTube all of his dolly shots, like in one, like, snip together uh, mm-hmm. reel. Because mm-hmm. um, you got, like, all his movies, I think he has that, has that dolly shot. But mm-hmm. um, I'll give it three and a half, four. I really like, uh, John David Washington is going to be dope. He is. Like, yeah. he's dope on Ballers already to me. Uh, that new movie coming out um, where he's a cop, I can't remember the name of it. Something of Men. Have you seen that trailer? I think He's I a cop have. that shot a kid or whatever. Oh, um, yes, yes, yes. I have men, seen uh, that. Monsters of Men or something like that. Uh, uh, let me see. Let me see. Um, I'm looking it up too. It's like Monsters the of Men. The Old Man and the Gun? No, it's like Monsters of Men. Oh, Monster. Is it I called think it's Monster? just called Monster. It's just called Monster. Monsters okay. and Men. Monsters Sorry. and Men, yeah. He has several different movies that are coming out in 2018, so that's the reason I'm mixing it up. But there's Monsters and Men, and then right the after that, he's playing somebody else in a movie called Monster. So. Yeah, Monsters and Men is the one I'm talking about. Okay, great. So I'm, he's going to be a star, man. Like, dude, he literally just finna take Denzel, and just, Denzel's like, yo, I'm just going to do old man roles now and beat people up in the equalizer. Mm-hmm. And my son can take all the roles that, you know, I don't want no more. Yeah, I mean, he is. He's going to be great. I mean, you close your eyes and you think you're listening to Denzel, but I think he's going to create his own following and, and, and fame. So what? how did you like Adam, Adam Driver in there? I really like Adam Driver a lot. Um, I thought he did a great job. Um, I mean, he was excellent in Lincoln. He was good on Girls. Uh, it was good to see girls. him. Yeah, of, Girls kind of got on my nerves. Yeah, I, I just, <laughs> that just, it just doesn't interest me, white I, women and... Yeah, in, in, I agree. You know, Insecure has definitely <laughs> balanced that out for me. Um, I have a hard time watching a series and not finishing it, and mm-hmm. it was pretty good the first I the season. In- yeah, I did the same thing with True Blood. I mean, it completely fell apart the last few seasons, but I had to keep watching it. And that's kind of what girls. I jumped off after the second season when it had like the witch on there. Yeah, oh, that's when God. I was out. I was out yeah. after that. Was like, oh, no. you left early. Yeah, I left early. I was out after that. I was like, no, when they yeah. had. Uh, the one black dude on there, and he was going crazy. The dude uh, that plays on Supergirl. I don't he was know the, he was a uh, homegirl for Queen Sugar's uh, boyfriend on there, on season two of True Blood. Oh, okay. Hang on, let me think. Is it Michael something? Something Michael. We'll go back to that. Yeah. Let's not go too far yeah. off on a tangent. But uh, anyway, it was just good to see Adam Driver play somebody with more substance. Mm, okay. Um. Yeah, I thought he did a good job. I only see Kylo Ren every time, man. It's hard for he's like, like I just think he's gonna like um, like bring out a lightsaber every time. You like. know what is so sad? As much as I love movies, 
and I hate to admit this, I have never seen any of the Star Wars movies. Never? Like never. any of them. Okay, so I saw The Empire Strikes Back when I was younger, but I can't really remember right. anything Maybe about it. And as much as I want to keep up with the newer ones, I feel like I want to go back you and watch to. them in the order that they came out. You got so No, go ahead and watch the prequels first. No, I don't want to do that. I no. want to see I want to see it as the what rest of the world saw them. Okay, so you want to be pissed off then. Okay. <laughs> I want to get what everybody else gets. I just never got into it, um, but I, I know who he plays, and I understand that much. Yeah, but so. he's just when you see him, when you do our Star Wars, you'd be like, I see what Daryl's talking about. Okay, he does seem like Kylo Ren this whole movie, and like every time I was thinking, of, what are you doing? Like, cause he has this like computeristic mm-hmm. voice mm-hmm. that's like it's supposed to be like Darth Vader, but it's his own voice, and I was just waiting for him to break out of the helmet and like you know or whatnot <laughs> and be like. Nigger, nigger, <laughs> through the little mask. <laughs> um, what? Uh, how did you like? Um, what is her name again? Um, Laura Harriet. Laura Harriet. I thought she did a great job. She did great. I, really I didn't like even. Her. I couldn't even tell. I forgot it was her from Spider Man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she completely changed it up. Um, yeah, I mean, she's had a very few roles, but I think that she's gonna be a rising star. I think she's gonna be great, and I thought she did a good job with that. And I love Topher Grace's David Duke. Too. Oh my goodness, yeah. He, I read that he was so depressed after playing that role that he had to go. I don't know if it was Harry Potter or like one of the Hobbit movies. I can't remember, but he had to like go do something completely. Oh yeah, it was the, the new those Fantastic Beast movies. Yeah, the yeah. new Fantastic Beast uh, movies. Yeah, but he yeah he said it was very secretive too. He couldn't tell anybody he was playing David Duke, and it really Why depressed him to play that role. Why couldn't he tell anybody? Um, oh, they wanted to kind of keep it under wraps. Yeah, so would know. Yeah, that's my understanding. Yeah, David Duke was upset too. Yeah, he thought that he was played as an idiot. Well, you which know I was that, but you know that with. that that uh, he did not know until mm-hmm. like the two thousands that that that, that, uh, that Ron Stallworth was a was a black guy. Yeah, I think it was two thousand six. Like somebody, <laughs> it was a reporter reached out to him to ask him for his side of the story, and that one was when he first learned that Ron Stallworth was black. And honestly, I wish it had happened the way it had in the film. <laughs> he just didn't know. Right. Be- well, no, I wish he had found out earlier because as embarrassed as he was, I think that that would have affected the rest of his political career. Mm. I don't think that people would have let him live that down. Mm. I didn't even think that. Yeah, because he'd be like, dang, you let a nigger into the KKK. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that would have had a profound effect on him. All right, let's start from the beginning of the film. Sure. Um Ron Stallworth just decides I'm gonna be a cop. <laughs> Let's go back before that. Like with Alec Baldwin at the beginning, I oh, don't yeah. know if this was intentional or not, but I thought it was really brilliant because there were several nuggets throughout oh, yeah. the film that are, you know, a glaring one at the end, like digging at Trump. And we know Alec Baldwin plays Donald Trump on Saturday Saturday Night Live. Mm-hmm. And that whole speech he was beginning giving at the beginning of the movie. It was all it was all a dig in like a mirror mm-hmm. of like everything that Trump is spewing off. So I I loved that at the beginning. Yeah, no, he killed it. Yeah. Um, and I I really appreciated the way um, Alec Baldwin's voice was kind of like matter of fact, mm-hmm. and the way in the way he was stating mm-hmm. everything. You know, he was mm-hmm. like, oh shit, okay, that's what we going. This is what we doing here, okay? Yeah. Because there were a lot of Make America Great Again themes like throughout the the movie, um, like even with the showing of um, Gone with the Wind, you know, which is supposed to be a classic, but then has this mammy character in it. I've never seen Gone with the Wind. I actually have never watched it either, I've but just the it. clip that they showed, you know, everybody talks about how like this is such a wonderful movie. And never interested me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just feel like I need to watch all the classics at some point. Um, I still, I ain't seen Sound of Music either. Uh, I saw it a long time ago. Yeah, I haven't seen Casablanca. Yeah. But oh, you tripping? I know. Now you get now you tripping now. You get yeah. to I fuck with Humphrey Gold Bogart. <laughs> no, no. I'll get to it. I'll get, I got a lot of movies to get to, but uh, but anyway, like it it just kind of made. I I was you know reading some articles to prepare for this today, and and that was one of the things that somebody else brought up. Um, you know, it was just the the use of Gone with the Wind and other little nuggets throughout the film. Um, and it kind of reminded me of another clip I saw from Angela Rye earlier this week where she was debating somebody on CNN about, you know, when was America ever great for mm. black people? And, you know, everybody talks about in the 1960s. And I I don't remember when Gone with the Wind was filmed, but like everybody 40s, thinks 40s. 40s. OK, mm-hmm. well, either way, but everybody thinks back to these wonderful times, like when the world was great for white people. And it's, <laughs> you know, even though this is like one of the best films ever, like nobody in that film, you know, is portrayed. Hattie no black McDaniels. person in that film is portrayed in a great way. No. Hattie McDaniels got an Oscar for that. And, yeah. And could not even 
it was could she, she not go or like she, could she not couldn't go or it was something like it was something like she couldn't even go or something like that I fr- it was something maybe like, she could or she had to come through the side door it was yeah, something some crazy bullshit. like yeah yeah shout out to Hattie McDaniels man she played a maid in a lot of stuff man. Mm-hmm. paved the way for us to be mm-hmm. able to not play maids all the time yeah and now we got Tyler Perry um <laughs> hey we can talk about Tyler Perry I used to hate him but I'm starting to develop a little bit more respect for him because either way, he, he, even if you don't like the coonery, which I don't, he's still opening doors. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm with yeah. you on that 100%. And I'm so and, glad he gave Elvin a job. And I'm cool with him <laughs> off the fact that it, it's a lot of bad white movies, too. If we're going to be free, oh, we got yeah. to be able to have the ability oh my to do God, bad, yeah. bl- bad like, black movies. What is movies. up with these Sharknado movies? I have never watched any of them. All them Adam Sandler movies that be on Netflix. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he got that five movie deal, and that one he did with Chris Rock was trash. Horrible, and I love Chris Rock, and <laughs> yeah. I was like, yo, man, I can't do this, Chris. Right, that was terrible. I got through like 30, 40 minutes, I can't do this. I watched the whole thing. You watched it? It, it oh. never got better. It was so bad. <laughs> I think I dropped out around the time when they got to the house, <laughs> when all the, everybody was packed in the house at the beginning, <laughs> when he picked them up from the airport, so I may have got 20 minutes then. Oh, man, I stay committed to these trash films. See, that's why you need to get in this hood area with me. Maybe you don't need to go. Maybe I you will. Might, you might dive into it. And you may be like, yo, D, did you see uh, Bitches Ain't Shit But Hoes and Tricks? Yeah. It's brand new. It just exactly. came out. <laughs> exactly. I can't. And once I start watching it, I have to see it through. You never got up, walked out of a movie before in your life? MacGruber or whatever that movie was called. Okay. It was, um, it's a Saturday Night Live movie with, um, it wasn't even, it's not even worth talking about. Was it in the 90s? No, it was like in the mid two thousands. Um Gruber, huh? and I'm forgetting her name from Bridesmaids and Oh, um Homegirl that was in um she was in uh, Ghostbusters, right? The new Ghostbusters, right? Um yeah, yeah. I'm gonna look this uh, up. This is so name? embarrassing that I can't remember this. I know I, I have idea. Kristen Wig and Kristen Will Forte. Wig. Um okay. Yeah, that's Wig. the only movie I walked out on. Like I just couldn't get through that. Couldn't get through it. I walked out of Solo. Have you ever seen Solo? I have not. Is that the one with Donald Glover? No, no, uh-huh. no, no, no. No, not that Solo. Okay. This one has got Mario Van Peebles in it. That sounds like something I would walk out on. Yeah, he was he was a, like a like a machine dude that went into like the forest <laughs> and shit like. And I was oh, like, no. and this is how old I am. It was a hall. I went to see the Hall's Fairy Fit fourteen. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> when it, the dollar movie? No, this one they won the dollar movie then. Oh, this Hall's Ferry when Hall's Ferry was a full limp theater in the nineties. It was called Village Square. That's what Village the Square was a dollar was. theater. Yeah, Hall's yeah. Ferry was just a regular theater. This is like ninety five. Okay. This movie came out ninety five, ninety six. Oh yeah, no. And All I went right. to go see a very Brady movie. I walked out of that to go see a very Brady movie. <laughs> You walked out of that and to go wanted to see, go see that. The, I was like, "Yo, I'm gonna, I, I gotta see something. Let me see this very Brady movie real oh quick." Oh my then. goodness! That's when you. That's when you used to bar, when you used to movie hop. Remember that? Uh huh. Yes. Do people still do that? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to do it in the movies with the assigned seats, but you can still pull it off. I mean, but like in the middle of the day. But, but this, the problem is that we got shit to do, though. It's not like yeah. you'd be like, "Man, yeah. I'm on, I got two and a half hours free." I'm you can pull it off, like if you go to like a Saturday or Sunday matinee, and, and then, nobody's paying attention. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, Mario Van Peebles ain't been in nothing good but New Jack City. No, you're lying. That Posse was good. Okay, Posse was good. All Posse right, was good. Um, Van Peebles got a couple of flicks, man. Um, I mean, the great Mario Van Peebles. We're not going to slander the great Mario Van Peebles, even though I solo suck. Um, okay, he was bad in what you call it, too, though. Um, oh, no, it wasn't, he wasn't bad in but the movie was bad. was um the High- Highlander movies. Yeah, no. He was in Highlander 3. Okay. Um, Mario Van P. Oh, he was good in uh, Ali as um uh, uh, as, uh, as um Malcolm X. I oh, you know okay fine fair enough maybe I should just say he slowly deteriorated. Okay, now that's, that's I, I will agree with that. Is that fair? Okay. He, I, I will agree with that. Oh, that's right. He wasn't Jaws: The Revenge. Mm-mm. He wasn't fully <laughs> clips. You ever saw fully clips? No, don't. <laughs> no. Gunman. Oh, Panther was good. Okay. Panther was good. He directed that too. I don't think I saw Solo that. was ninety six for every, for those keeping track out of there. Mama's Flores Mama's Flores family was good. Judgment Day was good. No, Judgment Day wasn't that good. It was okay. <laughs> okay, no, you uh, you're you're right. Oh the Carlitos Way was okay. Carlitos Way was the good. The set number two, the Carlitos Way was two was good. 
Uh, what do you think about that 50 Cent movie, All Things Fall Apart? Did you ever see that? When he was I a never, football player that got cancer. Yeah, I didn't see That's the one he lost all the way for, right? Yeah. Yeah, I still, yeah. I haven't seen that. I heard he did a pretty yeah, good job. Yeah, it was decent. It was, okay, so he's in Drumline 2, too, so that's where that's. Oh, that's well, where we I didn't even know there was a Drumline <laughs> too. <laughs> yeah, I watched it, too, man, because I'm okay. a hood. I'm a black. I love black film, man. I've seen yeah. every black film in the 90s, I think. Well, I want to support, but who? Yeah, it was on BET though. It was an okay. easy little watch though. But the thing, like, it's hard for me to like start a tra- like get started a trash movie. But once I do, I'm <laughs> going committed. to see it through. I'm gonna, <laughs> I have to. I have to. I got to see how it ends. So let's get back into this. Yeah. Um, so Ron Stallworth says, "Hey, I'm going to be a cop." Mm-hmm. I mean, you want to let me be a cop so he goes through the whole training and all that. Yeah, okay. in Colorado too. Like out of all the states in the seventies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it kind of ties into now. Like, why would somebody become a cop? Yeah, I would only be a cop. I would be a dirty cop off the front. I would know going in, I'd be a dirty cop. In what way? Um, I would definitely become a detective and be definitely shaking down drug dealers. Okay. I definitely and I, or or be to do or be like in the departed or with uh whitey bulger mm-hmm. hey man kick me down a hundred grand a year i'll let you know what i'll let mm-hmm. you give you all the papers everything you you're gonna be a snitch no not a snitch you i'm gonna be an about, informant no 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 i'm saying like yo you big oh, drug dealer give me a hundred grand a year uh you know your boy a uh, little ricky uh, you, you know keep, you keeping him. the drug dealers out of trouble yeah not, that's the high level you know and I'm, I'm gonna bust your little home. i'm gonna bust your little mans though yeah i'm gonna get pookie on the corner uh-huh but i won't get you though 100 mm-hmm. grand a year we'll call law square. well i mean that's how people use informants anyway so yeah i couldn't do that like shout out to sharon uh i got to go i uh, see sharon uh this, <laughs> this weekend mentioning uh <laughs> law enforcement he's in the fbi and we were talking about all the fed stuff and all that or whatnot funny 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 dude man like he's totally a fed though oh wow like he is like fed it up like he is the typical black federal agent when you see him like in a movie he walks like that he is that like is like straight sitting up straight type shit like that's awesome we were all in high school did all we imagine high school. Did we that's imagine? how i met raven is through sharon <laughs> hey we, sharon uh, he listened to the show shout out to oh, sharon but sure. he was just talking about how um just the federal. I was like, dude, Sharon, like, how do you don't take the bag? And he's like, dude, it was like 150 grand. He was telling us a story. And I was like, how don't you take 20? And then, like, we split this. How do you have the word thought to do that? He's like, dude, because. Integrity. Well, no, he said that, but he also said some crazy stuff about how really it's hard to get fired from the federal agent as long as you tell them the truth up front. Mm-hmm. Like, he said a dude got busted. In a, a, the feds were raiding a whorehouse. He was in the whorehouse, and he just said, "Yeah, I got a sex problem. I was there. You know, he admitted to everything." So, so they something couldn't fire like him. that, I could see like forgiving. But I mean, I, I in some ways I understand. I mean, the FBI spends a lot of money training them, mm-hmm. and if you have a good agent, you got to think that's about what he said. That's exactly what he said. He said he was a good agent, though. Yeah, yeah, and so maybe getting caught up in the whorehouse, I can see forgiving. But I'm sure if it was people telling Whitey Bulger. Was up, and that was for years, though. That's a crazy <laughs> thing. 15, 20 years, this dude got away with that. Like, yo, yeah. how? Yeah, <laughs> but I would be like that. I've been, I've yeah. been like, hey, little pookie, man. Who, who has a hundred grand to give me? Yeah. Do I need to talk to you, or do I need mm-hmm. to talk to you? Get your man's on the phone, mm-hmm. cause I'm finna bust you right quick. Yeah, <laughs> and well, I'd be popping the trunk. I'd be shaking people down. Trying to holler at people's girl, drug dealers' girlfriends, mm-hmm. all that stuff. I would be killed, or I'd be in jail at some point. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think to go back to to the movie yeah. and to think about this question a little bit more, um, it was the whole issue that um, Ron had with his girlfriend in the movie. You know, do you think that you are more powerful and effective from the effective from the inside, or you think you're more powerful and effective by protesting? You know, what do you? Yeah. Where's your place? Yeah. I mean, I couldn't be no cop, man. I don't even know how, and especially in the 70s and everything, like, how do you want to be a cop in the 70s in yeah. Colorado? Yeah, especially with the way you're going to be treated. Oh, man, like, I couldn't. That's hard for them to warn him from the beginning. Like, yo, are you okay being called a nigga? Because it's going to happen. That's like, Jack, it felt like Jackie Robinson when they first was like, like in Jackie Robinson movies. Mm-hmm. Like, where they like, you okay with all that? Like, you gonna take some bullshit or whatever. Like, imagine your job today. Oh, I when they, If they hired you and they said, look, Daryl, this is what you gonna have to put up with. Now, how much am I getting paid though, to be called they, nigga? Though? Right. If they pay me a million a year, you can call me nigga all you want to. <laughs> I'll have my headphones on. <laughs> um, 
So he finally gets on the force. Mm-hmm. He goes into, uh, they have him in the cage. You know, just checking out weapons and evidence and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it was interesting that main, the main dude that was fucking with him mm-hmm. or whatever is an archetype throughout the whole movie being a, just yeah. a dick in mm-hmm. general uh, moving forward. Um, but it's almost, I felt like he saw the opportunity like, yo, it's a lot of racist shit going on here. Y'all need me to do this though. Yeah. And they were like, uh, okay, I guess if you can do it. And he ends up getting the job on the detective after like a year. Yeah, and that's the, the that's the part I'd like to read about in the book because that was also the part that was disjointed because he starts off first going undercover at this Black Panther rally. Well, no, he then he asked first to be like to do the KKK, and then he said no. Or did they no? Or did they ask he him? Want, they they asked him to, to go to uh, the to, rally to the first. rally with the uh, Kwame Torre. Yeah, yeah, and so I and I was just kind of confused as to like the time that passed in between that assignment and when he started going undercover with the KKK and like how did that assignment end? And so I kind of that's the part I like. I want to know the truth about, and that's one of the pieces that was just disjointed for me because mm. I was like, how did he go from that, which was also a really interesting assignment for maybe for him to be infiltrating both at the same time yeah well but no, I he did he really to went seen... to that, that that was true though that him going to that right. thing was i just true. wanted to see like how that played out yeah i would have liked to have seen that and maybe that's a, a separate story on its own there um, is a documentary called black Klansman 2 black Klansman 2 no black Klansman 2 like in comma 200 oh, gotcha okay like if, if um because i because if you google black Klansman, mm-hmm. the documentary pops up too mm-hmm. um See what I'll have to watch that because that, that's that's just a piece of the story I don't know and just didn't really bring it all together for me. Um, so he um, infiltrates the um, Black Student Alliance mm-hmm. at it was they were in, they were in Colorado Springs. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out what fucking college is in Colorado Springs. They got these many black people. That's another good question. <laughs> like, I, I mean, no, <laughs> just, I, some people I mean, shout out to Focus, too. who's from Colorado too, but he's from Denver, though. That's I can see, like, that's a metropolitan. We yeah. talk Colorado Springs. And Air, in the, the 70s, Air Force, the Air Force on, Academy yeah. is the only thing that's in Colorado Springs for real. Yeah, it had to be some community people too. It had to be a community college. Mm. That's what I'm thinking. It had to be a community, or just college. people from the community at this meeting. Yeah, too, maybe but, it wasn't yeah. a necessarily a um, BSU meeting like mm-hmm. they like they claim it is. Yeah. Um, but it, it was just the whole idea of like you're gonna go from infiltrating this side, to infiltrating this, you know, the other side. Um, I just wanted to see, you know, what happened with that. Other than like, let's show him meeting his girlfriend. Like, what was the point of that piece? You know what? We may need to review the Black Klansman starring Max Julian from 1966. I'm cool with that. But it's not. Is it? I know it's not the same story. No, no. But, listen, yeah. we gotta watch this. Okay. After his daughter is killed in a church bombing, a light skinned black man. No, it's a light skinned black man infiltrates the Ku Klux Klan to avenge her murder. Okay. He's a, so. Is he somebody that's passing? Yeah, this is him. I guess. Yeah, he's supposed to be white, but. So kind of like a black like me story. Yeah. Oh, okay. We might have to watch that. Yeah, 1966. It's on Amazon. Okay. All right. Cause yeah, I saw it on, I saw it's, it's on, it's, it's on Amazon Prime, on on free Amazon Prime, Amazon All right. Prime. All right. Max Julian is in as, as well from the Mac. If uh, anyone's keeping score, um, but yeah, I don't, I didn't understand that, that, uh, that, that the amount of black people there. But I, that's mm-hmm. you know, the but the Kwame Torre. Shout out to um, I forgot his name though. For, uh, I call him Jack Bauer to Black Bauer, because he was twenty four. Uh, that plays Kwame Torre and Dr. Dre. Um, he's doing well oh, too. Oh yeah, he is doing really well. He's doing well too. Um, oh, Corey wise. Hawkins is that his Corey name? Hawkins, yeah. Um, actually, all them cats that was in Straight Outta Compton yeah, are doing well. Like everybody they are. in that movie. Is Every like, time I see them, I get excited. Like you know, yeah. Uh, the best out of the whole bunch is uh, Homeboy. They played uh, Easy. Oh yeah, he's doing it. <sighs> a great job. Oh, Detroit. he was the best part. Of Detroit. He was the best part of um uh, uh, Superfly. I actually did not see Superfly. He's kinda. the best part of that movie. I, w- I had just heard a lot of. It's bad. Okay, yeah. I'll, I might watch it just to say I watched it. So yeah, I, I mean, just because you got to do it black for card. Movie yeah, card. yeah, yeah, exactly. Black movie card. Yeah. Um, yeah, but in, I thought he was great in Detroit. And just as basis for comparison, like I gave this one a, a three slash six point five. I would have given a Detroit, you know, a four and a half. Really? I mean, a lot of people were saying I, I didn't great. see. I haven't seen Detroit. You have to see it. It's pretty good. Very like, people suspenseful. People were saying it was torture porn, black torture porn. It was suspenseful. Um, I wouldn't call it torture porn. 
it's a true story. It happened and mm-hmm. it stayed true to the story. Okay. Um, I don't think the intention was to turn people on to the torture of black <laughs> <Right>. people. <laughs> it's, it's what happened. Yeah, it's, it's what happened in Detroit. Yeah, and I thought the characters played it well. Um, it's a sad, sad story and another one that I, I just never learned in history class. Yeah, I've I'm, I'm, I'm read about the Detroit riots for for years. Um, yeah, I just mean this story specifically and like what happened to these people and the, I'm I'm forgetting the name of the, the musical group that was at this hotel. Oh, was it the Stylistics? I think it was. I think oh, it was and just like how it affected everybody's lives after. You have to see it. Yeah, the one dude, I know the one dude dropped out of the group mm-hmm. after that. Yeah, he and, became a pastor. Oh, he did? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you have to watch it. You have to okay. watch it. So I just, I just wanted to give a basis of comparison and and the reason for my lower view. And I, I think that if you're gonna tell the story of black people, you want to stay true to it. Okay. So that's um, just my personal view. Shout out to Detroit, man. Um, and he also was great on um, um, The Shy. I still haven't watched The oh, Shy. The Shy is great, man. He's fucking good on it too, man. I've heard mixed reviews about it. I love The Shy. Uh-huh. Like, I love that movie. That's a dope-ass movie. I love that movie. Uh-huh. Um, so, next up, um, in the film, he infiltrates them. He meets uh, Patrice, mm-hmm. um, which is, he's trying to highlight. Well, why wouldn't he? Um, Beautiful. Yeah, why wouldn't he? Uh, and she looked great, though, in this movie. Mm-hmm. With the afro and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, like, you know, she's to the car core black all the way. And he's like, trying to figure out his way, I guess, where he his place is. I guess that's a juxtaposition between she's so affirmed to being black, mm-hmm. he's trying to find out, figure out his way through this world being black. Mm-hmm. I don't, I think he understands his way through the world. I think he's trying to figure out how to be effective. Okay, that's a good point. And good point. Um, I think, and I think he knows how he feels like that he should be. I think he's open, it, open to hearing her perspective on it, but I think he knows where he thinks he's most effective. Mm. Okay, I can see that. And what did you think about the scene where they're taking Kwame Torre and then that same cop from the cage is the one that pulls them over and Oof. harasses her? Yeah, that's one of the scenes that I thought was a little forced. Really? And you think I, so? so and, and this is just me trying to go back and I'm wondering like what actually happened. Because mm-hmm. like, the whole time I'm tr- I'm wondering when is somebody on the bad side going to figure out what he's doing because this is supposed to be a secretive investigation and all of these characters are crossing paths repeatedly it's colorado springs it's not that big yeah (laughs) but i mean like even in the storyline like they're constantly crossing paths so i'm like when is this asshole cop gonna figure out that he's harassing the girlfriend of somebody he works with (laughs) like i don't i don't like come on now that's true yeah well and I, yeah, I didn't understand that whole thing. Yeah, that was a weird kind of setup with mm-hmm. that. I guess that was. I could see how you think it was forced. Like we're yeah. gonna keep these loop. We're gonna keep this loop going mm-hmm. of this same character being a fuck around yeah. on the force. And it's like we get it. Like so, and I read that this was one of Spike Lee's only films where there were no deleted scenes. And there, I think that there really? were plenty of opportunities that. for there to be deleted scenes. And I think that we got that this dude is a fucking jackass and he's probably harassing black people, not only that he works with, but, you know, on this. Yeah. And, and it was a fine scene, but it's just kind of like, this is one where I'm kind of like, we, probably, we might have been able to do without that one. Wow, I did not know. Wow, I did not know that that was, that he didn't have any deleted scenes. Yeah. And that's, prob- that's probably another reason why I kind of felt disjointed. Hmm. So he filmed damn near what he needed. He filmed only what he right. needed. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was an independent film, I think, you yeah. know, or filmed on an independent independent yeah. film budget. So I think he he got what he wanted and he tried to piece it all together. Mm-hmm. I wonder if there were some scenes he wanted and didn't get, like because of that though. So we move on to him finally getting the, the role of, of infiltrating the clan and calling them up and being Ron Stallworth, even though he fuck <laughs> to give him his real government name. Yeah. And how did you not yeah. figure it out like but I mean, you gotta think though. This is not in the, the age day, of Google, right? So, right. So yeah. they, you can't look up Ron Stallworth and see what he looks like. Uh-huh. I guess. I mean, I guess you can went in the phone book and then called. Mm-hmm. You know. But then as soon as you know, well, I guess he could pick up hello, and then 
he may have his black voice like, can I speak to Ron Stallworth? That's the other thing I read. Um, Ron Stallworth never used a white voice. He always used his own voice. And I've never heard him speak, so I don't know what his voice sounds like. Mm. But I, I don't know. If but that makes it more compelling to me right. than actually used a white voice, though, because it, it gives into the whole idea of code switching, yeah. having to make yeah. yourself and better to be exactly. around palatable for and white that, people. And that's another piece where I was like, okay, I understand why Spike changed that up from the real story. Like that, that's a change I was kind of okay with because I'm like, I think it does help change, help tell the story for all the reasons you just said. Especially like when Topher Grace is talking about if I was talking to a black person, I'd know, I would it because know. Of the way y'all say aura and like stupid shit like that. <laughs> um, so we know none of that stuff happened because Ron, you know, said I never, I never changed my voice. And I guess the, the police, you know, I don't know if there was a discussion about it, but they said that he should speak the way he always speaks just for the risk of, I think, what you said. Like, what if he calls and asks for Ron and he answers the phone in his normal voice and he would have to change it. So in the real story, he never used a white right. voice. Um, so he find, he gets in there, but so now we get to meet the clan, the mm -hmm. local clan. Mm -hmm. Um, I was mad about this because I think Cole Hauser should have been in here somehow. Oh, I don't know. You want to bring just, him back from higher learning? Look, he's just the resident racist. <laughs> he Every does play movie, a good racist. Him, um, um, what's, uh, uh what you call his dad, uh, uh. Angela Keeper Sutherland? Oh, no, Angela oh John Voight. John yeah. Voight. He constantly would be there. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's roles where I, when I think of a racist white person, I think of them. I think of Keeper Sutherland and Donald Sutherland, too. Keeper maybe... Sutherland? What did, he, what did Keeper Sutherland do racist? Come no, on, no, no. now. A time to kill? Him and his... Well, no, so his dad was actually good in that movie, but no, Keeper Come Sutherland on, Donald was, Sutherland is dad. Donald Sutherland. Donald, no, Don, so Donald Sutherland was... Um, is, who, is his dad, right? Yes, is, is his dad. Right. But in, in A Time to Kill, he played like a good lawyer who um, Matthew McConaughey was going to and asking for advice. Yeah. But no, Kiefer Sutherland was one of the racist assholes. Oh, really? I didn't even trip on uh -huh. that. Uh-huh, yeah. Ooh, Keeper. Keeper's got some other good roles. Cole House ain't doing nothing but Tyler Perry movies uh, <laughs> like the Family That Prays. <laughs> So that's last he's trying week. to redeem himself after higher look, learning. Look, I, I look at him. If I, I watch Good <laughs> Will Hunting, him and Michael Rappaport, he wouldn't marry. Oh, that's him. another one. That'd been a great one too. He divorced his white wife and got a black one to try oh, he to got, come he back. He got him that. a black black one too, though. <laughs> I'd holler to her in the club. Um, Cole Hauser, I was looking at Good Will Hunting maybe like two months ago, and I was uh -huh. like, "Yo, you're a racist. You're a racist. He's just a resident asshole. Yeah, like he's just an asshole. He's an in asshole in every everything, man. Yeah. Has he ever been like a, a protagonist in any movie? I don't know." I think Look that's what fuck. he does signs up for. Like, yo, I'm going to I feel like be I have seen him in one movie and like it wasn't believable. <laughs> right, because you was waiting for him to say nigga at some point. Right. Um, but so you get the cast of all these Klansmen. Mm -hmm. And I like little Billy Bob or whatever. I call him Billy Bob. Little fat, little... Uh, is he oh. autistic? Was he autistic or like on the spectrum? He I don't know. So that actor has been in a couple other things I've watched acting the exact same way. So I'm wondering if that's just his personality. Oh, you're, so you're saying that? Oh, you're saying <laughs> that he's on the spectrum already? I I don't think he's already on the spectrum. I think he's just one of those people that's like I'm just gonna act like how I am as a person and like make a career out of it. Because <laughs> he was on the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt acting the exact same. Wow. Way. Okay. So this. Exact wow, same, like just watch like one episode from this last season is the exact same person, like kind of off. Weird. They and and every single, I feel like in a lot of movies where uh, there's like white southerners play, they have to make one of them like retarded or off. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's true. Yeah, and they're always overweight too. So I'm like, what's up with this true. like Those overweight the most, doofus? Uh, Mississippi like, and Alabama, I think the most overweight states in the country. Them in Wisconsin, I believe, are the most overweight states. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, there's always that like token character. So I expected him to be there. Mm -hmm. He was some comic relief in the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you see the, I, there was um, a place the sighting of uh, Michael Buscemi, Steve Buscemi's brother? Really? Wait. That was Steve Buscemi. The main dude was Michael Steve Buscemi's brother. Really? Michael Buscemi. Yeah, you didn't trip off that they look like just like Steve Buscemi. The Steve main, Bush the, okay, ma so the main dude that was an asshole or whatever that was like. You, trying to he okay? So he so Steve Buscemi just kind of looks like your resident racist. Yeah, but that's his brother though. <laughs> you know, he does look exactly like him now that you say that. Has he been in anything else? I'm, I'm that's disappointed also, I, I, that like yeah, Jimmy. That was his name. Yeah. Jimmy. Um, he does look exactly. Like Steve and I really I love Steve Buscemi. I think oh, I love excellent. Steve Buscemi. He's excellent. I mean, he made you like fall in love with him in Con Air, and he was oh, like yeah. riding around people's heads in his car. I yeah. mean, he's he's great. <laughs> Michael Buscemi, man, let me see what he's been in. Um, it may have been some movies I thought it was Steve Buscemi, and it was maybe it was Michael Buscemi. I don't know. Mm. 
Um, it don't look like it's nothing on here that I know. No, he looks like he's had some small roles yeah. and things. Yeah, he didn't look like his brother. He, he I like didn't he even like, think about that. He does look exactly like him. Like he looked like you know, he stayed on his brother's couch. Look like well, he's a working actor. It looks like. Yeah, it looks like he's had like a some one episode roles and, yeah, and could, several TV shows. Stuff. Yeah, you know, and it looks like some crappy roles. So this was a good one for him then. Cause yeah, he did a good job. This is this is his biggest role actually. Yeah, it looks like from his IMD. <laughs> yeah. I'm the IMDb. Yeah. It looks like this is his best role, or, or his biggest starring role. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I he was a great classic racist man. He was. He was a great classic racist. You know, he went over to he he. Of course, he didn't think that the the clan was going as far enough as they wanted him. He wanted him to go. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, now, after Ron is infiltrates them by calling them and talking to them on the phone and getting them to get to go. Now, in the real true story, it was actually two people he had that he he talked for. Oh, okay. It was two people that infiltrated the clan. It was two people gotcha. that played Adam Driver's part. It was two different people. Okay. It was two different people. So there were two people that actually infiltrated the yes, clan. Yes, that okay. he acted like he was their voices for the two different people. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So he was Ron, yeah. and then who else? No, Ron, and then Ron brought his boy. It'd be like, I'm Ron Stallworth, and I'm bringing Jimmy Page with me. Okay. And that's my boy, gotcha. he races too. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he did the voice. I'm more, I'm like, if I remember the story, okay. reading the excerpts, it was just like, oh, I'm bringing my boy Jimmy with me. He, he okay. don't like niggas either. So, okay. you know, he got down. So, the one of the biggest true things, though, those two federal agents that ended up being there when Adam Driver went to the shoot when they were shooting, mm-hmm. that is true, though. Those two federal agents, there were two federal agents that were there at a meeting like that. Okay. And they, and they got fired and rep, fired and stuff and the prosecutor. Okay. Was Ron there during that? No, movie? no, no. That was Adam, okay. the two, the Adam Driver's character and the the Jimmy guy. They were there Got then, it. though, and saw all that. And they had somebody who was actually taking pictures, oh, far away though, of all these people. Okay. Because you saw in the movie they showed them taking pictures, didn't they? Yeah, 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 they did. But it was actually another third party. Like they, it was a big operation, though. Mm-hmm. Like they make it like it was just like this them two. Like I assume trying. it would have had to have been. Like yeah. I understand. Like we're not, we weren't living in the age of social media at the time, or well, we weren't living at all. Yeah. But you know, I understand yeah. that that's not the the age of social media time. But I would assume that an organization that was that big and that picky about who they're going to allow in had some intelligence. Yeah. And yeah, so I assume that it was probably a better, well organized operation than the one that was portrayed. Yeah, I'm, and it's or maybe they just that stupid. Maybe they could be just that stupid too, though. Let's let's, let's keep that open that mm-hmm. they was just that stupid, and just happy to find someone else that that just like niggas too. Okay, maybe. I don't know. Okay, it's just one of them things. So his relationship with um, Patrice mm-hmm. when. You know that he's like trying to keep it away from her, that he's a cop and whatnot. How do you feel of her reaction and the way she trying to treat him afterwards? Do you, how do you feel about how she kind of her interaction with him? I understand because for one thing, there's just the whole idea of a woman being deceived and the relationship aspect of it, and then she believes so deeply to the core about how black people can be productive in this time. So she doesn't understand his position. You know, he's living both sides of it, so he can kind of understand it. She's not. Um, So there's the whole element of her, one, feeling like you fucking lied to me. And then, two, like, I don't even understand your perspective as to how you are going to be a productive black man in this time. So I got it. I completely understood her reaction. Did you feel her, like, at the end when he was like, yo, you know, you can't fuck with me still, though? And she's like, no. Yeah. I get it like one like you deceived me and two like I don't understand your position in this world like you were saying he's trying to figure out his yeah. positions I think that he understand it so understands it so clearly and she sees that she's not going to be able to change that and she understands her position so clearly and they're so diametrically opposed like there's no way like mm. that they can be in, in a productive relationship when they understand the black person's position in the movement so differently I mean yeah that's a good point it, like, I'm, let's see. That's why I needed a woman to do the show with me because I would have been. We, it'd have been over. Just like, man, that, that that bitch tripping. Man, she didn't want to be down. Um, he didn't did. Her, he well, had saved her life. Everything like that. <laughs> no, she I mean I've read a lot. I've read a lot about how people's marriages are falling apart because of their opposition, their their feelings about Trump. Like I get I it. Like if too, I if yeah. you were in a relate if if your wife was like, man, I kind of understand Trump. How would you feel? I know we'd be done. Right. 
So I think that like you know it's not that you know no we literally glaring. Like, <laughs> no, I'm just saying in the movie literally. like it's not like that you know I extreme. Paid, I, but... I'll be calling you. I'm like, hey man, um, <laughs> I know you do this other kind of law, but she said she fucking with Trump. So, right, yeah. And you'd be like, hey, I know a good family lawyer. <laughs> Go ahead uh-huh. and get, I, I'd have moved into a little apartment. I'm actually down the street from you over in Bennington. <laughs> like, right. I would get a little, yes. get a little one bedroom down over in Bennington or something. <laughs> and I would help you out because you does some fucked up shit. But imagine, like, she doesn't even tell that to you. She's just secretly working for Trump. Oh, I had to kill her then. You'd, you'd actually be on the other <laughs> side of me from a glass and being like, and then I'd be like, hey, man, damn, man, you, uh, I need to get the dream team. I get you and Brand and a couple other people have my dream team. Like, y'all got to understand, okay, I'm going to do my 10. I just don't want to do 25. <laughs> so you understand Patrice now? Yeah, no, I understand. I understand. But, I, 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 but it's like on a bigger basis, I'm like, yo, I saved your life. You don't want to give me no pussy, though? I saved your life. Can I at least get something for saving your life? Come on. Thank you. Wish that, I'll be like, I wish I'd have let that car run and the motherfucking bomb your shit up. Thank you, sir. Give me none after all this. I mean, then you at least, at least like brush against my balls, like just like slide past on your way out. I don't owe your dick shit. Oh. Thank you, sir. See, see, see. This is why we have a woman on the show because if it was two more dudes, they'd be like, you got damn right you should be mad on your pussy. <laughs> Depends on when she found out. He oh, I can't wait for you to see Plug Love now. The, now, now I can't wait for you to see Plug Love oh, now. Oh, man. That may need to be the this... next one. We got another one we're going to do after this before Plug Love. But gotta... Okay, I got to watch Plug Love. Yo. Is this one I need to watch by myself? Yes. Do I need like... No, I might <laughs> come and watch it with you because, yo, it's so... Rich. It's so... It had been so great if somebody else directed it. Oh my! Do I need some edibles is, first? Like what? no, 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 no. Okay, okay. You need to drink. Okay, yes. all right, but, all right. Because I watched it at eleven in the morning on a Saturday, and I was like, I was riveted. Like I literally was sitting there, <laughs> riveted. And, and my wife came and she was like, "Yo, you were all in this little bullshit." I'm like, "Yo, I'm sitting, I'm leaning up," and the thing, no, yo, plug love, y'all. I'm telling you, man. But okay, towards the end of this podcast, I'm gonna find the description of plug love. <laughs> Yo, so that everybody I'm going to make you watch the trailer on Amazon before one, but after we're over, I'm going to make you watch the trailer for it, and you're going to be like, because they had another movie I saw that was good, the same dude that's in this movie, his name is Murder M or something like that, his actor name, or he's a rapper too out of Detroit. It's from the best-selling novel. Yeah. Okay. And then um, he had another movie, though, that was that was good even before this, though, and that's why I was like, yo, oh, he's doing this movie called Plug Love. I got to check this out, because the first Hood movie I like, too. Okay, so that movie, I'm just going to tell you guys, that got a 6.4 out of 10. Think about that. Think Bla- about a hood black movie got a 6.4. Yeah. And Black Klansman got a 7.8. So <laughs> Perspective. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Look. Plug love. Stay tuned. <laughs> Plug love passed. You got a 64. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> it did. It passed. So what do you think about the relationship with, within the clan dynamics, like with the wife and that was interesting to me with the wife oh and the, and the husband, because it was like, I'm glad she was a bigger woman, because mm-hmm. it has made it more comedic and more like. Yeah, I was like, are we trying? What are we trying to to tell here? Like, what what's the story Spike's trying to tell I didn't care. here? It was this? funny. It was, it was like good. it was it was it was, cool. it was more comedic relief. So I so I guess you needed that those comedic pieces for the clan for to humanize them a little bit. I don't know, um, but. It, it didn't make me like her. I think that <laughs> she was put in there to show, and this is our listeners that, that are probably, man, you can email us, LandoCalPod at gmail.com, to show that he had low self-confidence as a man. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That him being with her. Yeah. Because she was cowtown and everything she he wanted. Mm-hmm. She wasn't that attractive. No. You know what I'm saying? She's a bigger woman. Mm-hmm. In general, I kind of look at men that have bigger women or unattractive women, and I think that you have low self confidence as a man. I know that sounds messed up. Oh, I don't make that assumption. I don't make that assumption <laughs> until I maybe meet her and I'm like, oh no, she's a dope chick. But in yeah. general, like when you just like, oh, you settled because she just did whatever the fuck you wanted her to do, and that mm-hmm. not even being a bigger girl. That's in general the woman. You like, damn, she's kind of weird and whack. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's because she do you do whatever the fuck. You know, he want to do. She ain't strong enough as a woman mm-hmm. to kind of, you know, put her, put not put you in a place, but like have them, them boundaries mm-hmm. yeah. within a relationship. And she yeah. was just down, she was down to beat fuck niggas up 
just mm-hmm. because oh absolutely she wanted to. absolutely because he wanted to actually yeah if he wanted to be in an NAACP though she probably would have been too yeah it's kind of one of those situations where you wonder which one of them is really feeding all of that like is it really oh her you're person? saying that maybe is he being more racist because yeah. she's racist and it's a constant exactly. circle right like, so like neither I, one of them are really that racist like, right <laughs> yeah like i feel like it's that's probably driven by her like honey you gotta get him mm-hmm. i do need to get him and then he said like we're gonna get him yeah we need to get him and it just keeps that constant mm-hmm. like perpetual as a racist so they may not both be that racist like i said right like, like if one of them fell off maybe the other one will go with them like they just need something some kind of passion in their relationship and, and this one is just hating black people. like have you seen three billboard boards uh, yes i love that it movie. reminds me kind of that relationship with the uh one cop and his mom oh yeah that's what it, that's yeah. what it, that, it, that that dynamic kind of reminded mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. of we need to do that one too though that yeah was that was dope. an excellent movie yeah that um, it reminded me a little bit of like, even though it wasn't uh, the uh, Oedipus complex situation like mm-hmm. in Three Billboards, mm-hmm. but that kind of way like they were constantly like edifying the racism with each other and like amping it up like yeah, like I'm making Nick. Did she say something like nigga pies or something like that? Like I don't think she said that, but I want in my heart believe that she said nigga pies. I think she did say something like, yeah, like that. Yeah, it wasn't something like that. Yes, I thought. Um, so like they're like, what do you think about like how they're they're collective work like is like a crew i guess like <laughs> like me and Matt always talk about the crews uh-huh. like they had a whole crew set up like you know they had the main leader you know that was kind of a little bit more little bit this corporate i guess you could be for the the low level clan you know what so i i kind of felt david duke on his perception of the film because mm-hmm. he felt like it made everybody look like idiots and as evil and as hateful as they are i don't think they're idiots David Duke particularly is not an idiot because that right, fool right. won office and stuff in Louisiana. Like, he ain't no fool. Yeah, so I feel like they looked more disorganized and all over the place than they probably actually were. And I feel like that's actually scarier. Oh, no. That's um, why I think it was a buffoonery. I think it was more of a buffoonery kind of like step yeah, and fetching kind of thing. Of right, and that's, like that. that's another piece where, like, I, I kind of get this, this is supposed to be a little bit lighter film. Um, but... If you're going to tell the true story, tell the true story. And so you're one of the people that don't like them changing anything from the original not, story. It doesn't, I mean, I, I understand if the, if it pushes the story forward and faster, okay. As, but, but you can tell don't Spike had an agenda, change though. It. But Spike had an agenda, though. With this. That's but why it's an agenda. Want, he wanted to make them look like buffoons. Fine. And I think you can do that. And I think it was fine with the character, the, the fat kind of off character and with the wife, um, even though I don't particularly think that you should always create your comedy by using fat people but I I felt like it took away from what actually happened and if it's gonna start taking away from the true story I think you need to be careful and like that's a very very Good fine point. line Good point. um because I think everybody not everybody obviously because we still have a I think the last few years has revealed that we have a lot of racist and ridiculous people in this world but i think for the most part most people that are moral people agree that these people are ridiculous i don't think you have to make them look stupid to tell the story Mm, good point very good point because i just like them being ridiculous yeah i mean we already know that we know this already but these are ridiculous views i don't think you need to make you know have them disorganized. So you're saying you're more scared either. of the corporate KKK guy. I'm absolutely. That's the one that's, that's going out to have drinks with you. Because that is like, who is in power right now. Yeah. Absolutely. Shout out to Kanye West, man. Oh, God. So, no, he's having. We are watching a manic episode. You think so? Absolutely. He is going. He has a mental health problem and he's going through a manic episode in front of the whole country. And it's sad. I blame four people for all of this. Hmm. I blame Barack Obama for this. If he wouldn't have called him a jackass and he felt like it was a disrespectful thing to him, no. That's the only reason he started fucking with Trump. Okay. I blame Jay-Z. Just just, just, just hug this nigga some, one time or two, you know what I'm saying? Make sure uh-huh. everything's all right. You didn't have to diss him by not coming to his wedding. I, mean, I, 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 I blame Jeff Bezos from Amazon. <laughs> okay. Because he went to go, he went in the time flux capacitor. Him and, um, uh, what's my homeboy from Facebook? Uh, 
Zuckerberg. Mm-hmm. They went. They went in the, in the time. Remember, with, where, uh, remember, when Marty McFly got the thing with the almanac to be able to like bet on shit though, and it fucked up the whole thing with the thing. Yes. They went back in time and figured out that yo, it'd be dope if we had like where you could ship everything to your crib all the time mm-hmm. and have these places, and it fucked up this whole timeline, and we're living in the second timeline. Oh wow, that's because interesting. Because Jeff Bezos and fucking uh, Zuckerberg, they went in time on us. They did. Okay. And so they got <laughs> billions of dollars now. And so everything. there's some joint Marty McFlys. Okay. There's some joint Marty. Fly. They went together. Okay. We need to find out. Did Jess Bezos go to Harvard too? There we go. See? Did I think he? he did. I think he may have went to Harvard. Let's let me find out. Look, they went, let, let me, me look find this out. Up. Yeah, let me find out Jeff Bezos. Go ahead. Went to give me give me the fourth one. I'll look this up. You look no, up. No, that was the four. That was, that the, four was the four? Yeah. Oh, Barack, okay, okay, got it. You yeah. said Jeff and Mark. Yeah. Okay. They're in the flux capacitor together. Okay. Um so that's why we we are where we are because of those four people. Mm-hmm. Um I'm glad you didn't say Kim. I really am. Oh no! Like, I mean, I, I mean that's fifth, like a half, a half one. Cause I mean, but I mean, Kim is gonna be Kim, man. I mean, she up in the White House getting black people out of prison, and her okay. She got is, one person out. I understand, but this I, fool was talking about today. He gonna get Larry Hoover out. You know what Larry Hoover is, right? For Chicago, the big biggest. Big Meech. Larry, Larry Hoover. Hoover. Now keep in mind, he is at ADX. Do you know what mm-hmm. ADX is? Was, no, I don't. It's the biggest maximum security prison in the world. Mm-hmm. Like it's in Colorado, Florence, Colorado, to bring it all the way back to where we at now. Yeah, you don't go in there. Jeff you don't went come to. Out. Sorry, quick. Jeff went to Princeton, by the way. But go ahead. Where you go? The Ivy League. Yeah, yeah. got it. They had Sorry, meetings. Uh-huh. Um, Skull and Bones. <laughs> <laughs> that was another decent um, movie. The Skulls. The skulls was good. Shout out to um, oh. uh, a Hill Harper that died in the movie. Yeah, it wasn't uh when he was popping Paul. the. Was Paul in Paul that? Walker was Paul yeah. Walker in that? No, he wasn't. Was he? Okay, never mind. What was it? The dude from uh, Dawson's Creek was the main cat in there. Uh, Pace. Vanderbeek. Is that, that's his name? James Vanderbeek was he in He fell it. off, didn't he? We ain't seen him in years. I don't know where he is. The whole Dawson Creek cast is gone. Um, no, but this whole thing with the way the Klan worked in mm-hmm. Colorado, mm-hmm. I don't know if they worked. I, I mean, maybe they did. I mean, because Paul it's Walker country. was in it. Sorry, Paul Walker go was ahead. In it? Okay. And Joshua Jackson. I got everybody messed up. Okay. And Joshua Jackson is still acting. He's on The Affair. What's The Affair? It's a show on Showtime with Dominic from The Wire. I can't think of his name. British actor. Oh, my boy! The boy, my boy that played um, um, McNulty. Yes. Dominic. Uh, what is his? I forgot his. I know you're talking about though. Yeah. And he played in um, Three Hundred Two. Yes. Yes. Um. So, oh, he's in that. It's called The Affair. Does he have his accent, American accent, or is he doing his Scottish one? He has an American accent. His American accent is stellar. Yeah. And he had a Baltimore one too, though. That's a whole nother. Oh, he does a great job. Oh, he does a great job. Um, yeah, so what do you ahead. think about like how the Klan, so we over talk about the Klan portrayal. So uh-huh. the Klan ends up, <laughs> the, this dinner thing. So uh, Ron Stallworth, in quotes, mm-hmm. ends up getting the, like, hey, I want to give you a card to be in the, the Klan. Mm-hmm. I, the only thing I did not understand is like, how they were so quick to let him get a car and like he didn't put in well I guess Adam it, getting back to Adam Driver Adam Driver's mm-hmm. out there hanging out with them and doing shit yeah but like I don't feel like he put in like no real work like I feel like you know like to get in like the mafia or a gang I feel like you gotta do some shit like yeah like he ain't beat up no black person or something like or something like get yeah to like show other like, than like shooting at the targets yeah which another interesting thing I read um, Spike Lee told um, John this is his name, right? John Washington? Yeah, John David, yeah. Um, he told him right before he went out that the targets they were shooting at were not props. They were actually real targets that the Klan used. Yeah, which was pretty compelling. And he said that that affected his performance. So all of that emotional reaction that he's having during that scene when he comes upon those targets is like his real emotion. Oh, not John David. You're talking about with Adam Driver. No, John Dave, because you know how he comes afterwards, right. like after they yeah. shoot, they yeah. they shot at them. Yeah, that was like right before that scene. Spike told him, like, these are real targets, dude. Um, so all of that emotional response is like right after learning that. Spike Lee loves to do those kind of tricks with people yeah. in movies. You know, he did that with School Days, right? Mm. Well, he split the uh, the two different sets of girls in two different hotels. Mm-hmm. He put all the light skinned girls in a real, real nice hotel, oh. and then he put all the dark skinned girls in a like a messed up motel. So, like, all of them were, like, really feeling some type of oh, way. Like, these wow. bitches stand at the Hilton. We at the Motel 6. 
So like a lot of that emotion is coming out on screen mm -hmm. because he's pitting them against each other yeah. like they can, you know, feel mm -hmm. really some type of way about mm -hmm. it. That whole Jigaboo song. Yeah, yeah I love that Ooh. movie, man. I know yeah, a lot of people have had. I like. I, love, I like that movie. I love that movie, man. Yeah. Even though I don't know what it wants to be, but because it doesn't know if it wants to be a musical or a movie, but both. Um, Why can't it be both? Just like Chicago. Can, never seen Chicago. It was great. You should watch it. Can't do that. It's just some movies. I'm, I've never seen um. Titanic either. Wow. Do you remember when we were supposed to go see Titanic? I that's where that that's where I'm like, kind of questioning this because I feel like you were there. No, I'm pretty no, 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 sure. no, no, no. We went to go. We tried to go see Half Baked, but y'all were underage. I'm trying. Or no, because I was the I'm only one that was sure 17. I saw Titanic with Sharon. No, but maybe not with me though. Okay. It was a, we tried to go see uh, Half Baked, uh -huh. and I was the only one that was 17. I tried to get the tickets for everybody, uh -huh. and everybody else was 16, and everybody, everybody else couldn't go. <laughs> Oh, wow. Cause they was trying to card everybody when we try to go in, and then we end up yeah. going to Exilorama. I do remember that. We end up going to Exilorama. Remember man. that? Yeah. Going old school, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, but the Adam Driver thing about him being Jewish, though, mm -hmm. I want to talk about that. Ah, uh, yes. Uh huh. I feel like that's most Jewish people, though, is how he is, and the way they look at things. What do you mean by that? I think a lot of them look at it, unless they're the straight up guy with the uh, yarmulke and the. Um, where the the long um, sideburns? It's a certain term for that. Mm -hmm. um, or a, a, they're acidic. Or yes, acidic that's what I was trying to think like of the that. term. Yeah, I feel like they they assimilate into whiteness and come in and out of it when they want to. Yeah, because they're not visible minorities. Exactly, but yeah. so, but I think they they purposely do it though. Or maybe unbeknownst to them, like Adam Driver, like until it was put in his face, like yeah, these motherfuckers don't fuck with you either, though. Yeah. I can kind of relate to that in some ways. Really? Yeah. Explain this. Okay, so nobody. Oh, this is a revelation. I hope that like the Trust other treat. half of my family like does not hear. So all my life, I was I had to fight. No, I'm just kidding. So all <laughs> my life, I was okay with people like thinking I was biracial and that I was like black and white because my mom, like when I was in high school, had this white boyfriend also oh, people and thought so, that was your dad. yeah and so they thought that was my dad and i never like because i knew that you know as much as like black is a hated minority like afghanis are too so i was like want, i you cannot you have want the double, like you the, want the, double. the two like really hated cultures together so let me i'm just gonna let these people think that the other half of me is white and i actually never told anybody like i don't even know if you knew i was half afghani like in high school i did not know until we were adults right because i never told anybody but i didn't think it was mixed either though i, don't, I know y'all i know niggas and i know when i see a nigga and they face <laughs> and they face them like it's crazy like and um, do you have this feeling though too when you see somebody and you can tell they're passing have you ever like seen like other but you be like, yo, my G. I've dated enough light skinned women in my life that are mm -hmm. biracial. Uh -huh. I know when you try to pass. Pass as what though? White. They can't okay. No, but they, or, or, or like they try to be that ambiguous, like Paula Patton kind of feel, where they won't really like kinda like uh -huh. You know, yeah. You know, they, they you ain't gonna you know it, it, I, I kinda get what overtly you're saying. passing. They're not right. it's not like passing like like Queen was in uh, the mm -hmm. movie Queen, not like where they're yeah, like, yo, yeah, I'm, I'm passing white. as white. Right, but it's like I just ain't gonna say nothing about it. Like yeah. I'm just gonna. That's interesting because that that's kind of how I was. I was like, if you assume I'm black, perfect. If you assume I'm biracial, as long as you don't think I'm mixed with anything other than white, great. And it wasn't until 9-11 that I started seeing, like, all of this bullshit going on that I was like, okay, like, I need to stop trying to deny this other part of me. And it, like, wasn't until, like, the blatant, like, attacks were, like, in my face that I'm like, that really is hurtful. That really is offensive because as much as, like, I've tried not to broadcast it, that is a part of me. Yeah. Um, so I kind of got it. Like, I, I get it. Like, you, I know, like, most people don't know it just from looking at me. They wouldn't look no. at it and assume, but it's just as much a part of me as, is, you know, yeah. somebody being Jewish and that being a cultural thing is a part of them. And if somebody says, you know, something hurtful and, and you know, hateful, it, it hurts just as much, even if you can't see it. So I, I got it. Wow. So, you, so, you, so you're saying you, like, you know how the Jews feel then? I'm saying I can relate to the feeling of something that's not obvious still being offensive when somebody attacks it. Okay. 
that's interesting. That wow, you was in the trust tree, man. That's, mm-hmm. you, we're gonna get some great emails. People are like, oh man, that was a that was a riveting feel good yeah. feel good moment. I mean, there are still people to this day who've known me all my life. They're like, I did not know your dad was from Afghanistan. I'm trying to remember when I found out. No, I think I did know maybe because your dad owned a restaurant over in uh, South St. Louis for a while, didn't he? That's my cousin's restaurant. Right, but I think I forgot. I think you told us like, yeah, and we went there one time. Yeah, when we were like That's right my out of college. Restaurant. Though. So yeah. I didn't. It like well, okay, we were adults, but I mean, uh-huh. my dad had no jobs and shit. Right. Like, I don't you know? feel like I was an adult until like maybe ten years ago. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a good point. Until I got a mortgage and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think maybe then he was like, yeah, my dad. And maybe I didn't trip off of it. Maybe I just, maybe it went over my head. I was like, damn, this daddy is Afghan. And maybe it just, <laughs> maybe just my mind just kind of like, oh, okay. Um, all right. I guess that's what it is. <laughs> but like, it was funny that Adam Driver was, when he was getting it in his mm-hmm. face though, like that Jewish, Jewish. And it's yeah. interesting you said that when you said, well, 9-11, mm-hmm. like it's, it's almost a similar yeah. kind of thing where he was mm-hmm. like, well, God damn. Yeah. I'm and it's in all- on this now. I get right. it now. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like even though like I wasn't wearing it as a badge before, like, like he when wasn't, it's something he wasn't, that is, he didn't you, wear, did he wear a Star David or something? No, he didn't. Did he? I felt like he did. Did have he one did? On. But he didn't yeah. go to church. He didn't do nothing. That, like right. he didn't do anything with that. He yeah, just, he wasn't like a regularly practicing. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> they finally led him to the clan, uh, and it's some quote unquote ceremony mm-hmm. though thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and Ron Stallworth ends up being. <laughs> Because for people that may not seen it, but so then David Duke comes in town. Mm-hmm. So this is basically like Barack Obama for the KKK. Yeah, he comes into town. Mm-hmm. I, I would argue he's probably the most famous KKK person. Absolutely, ever in history. yeah, yeah. Because he tried to run for president too. I think yes, he did. Yeah, and he ran for senator. I think he was like a state rep. Yes, no, he's been too. very politically involved. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like, if this story had played out the way it did they in the he's film. The corporate, and even the movie, they said he's like the corporate version for KKK. He's like, yo, mm-hmm. I'm, we ain't going to move like this. Like, yeah. we cross burning. Mm-hmm. We ain't doing all that, though. We just going to kind of just But imagine move. how that would have affected his followers if they had known that he, la- he allo- personally allowed a black person to infiltrate the KKK. How do you think that would have affected, like, his just psyche? Like, but I mean, but I guess how would... Like we, it's hard to blast stuff like that. Like back then, you got to think like. No, I I get that, but I'm just saying like, imagine if it had played out the way that it played out in the film. I don't know why Ron Stallworth didn't come forward when he was running for state rep in Louisiana or something like that. Like, hey, yo, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to the the, the, the Denver Gazette. Yeah, I mean, I don't and know. And, the, and those, like I said, those are pieces of the story. I don't know. I don't know if the investigation was still ongoing at that point. That's a good point. Um, because I don't know. Because it went all to the '80s, I think. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I just it don't was know. Because '77, right? This is like '77, '78, something like that. And I think yeah. it went all to the '82. Yeah, I honestly don't know the time frame, but you know, it wasn't until a reporter reached out to David Duke, so it's something that was leaked to the press. So I'm not sure. Is it when he you know, wrote how, his book, maybe? I don't know. I just I don't know when he wrote his book. I, that's just some pieces to the story that I don't know. So then, they, so Ron Stallworth, and that's you know that part is true, with mm-hmm. Ron Stallworth having to protect David Duke when he came in town. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. true. So how would you feel? Oh wow! If you had to represent in your job as a lawyer, and mm-hmm. it was David Duke, I don't know how. I mean, because you work for the corporation, I'm trying to figure out like how. I mean, like, the, like be, a lot of people would say I represent the man. You do. But I you will do. say that I have been fortunate enough in my career that I've not been a posi- in a, well, okay, I'm about Ethical to lie. Position. I'm about to lie. Uh, I was going to say I haven't been in a position where I felt like my ethics were an issue. And I have some attorney-client privilege issues, but I will say that now thinking about it, about 10 years ago at the very beginning of my career there was like one time that I was like oh yeah I don't feel right about this and it actually was a race related issue really Uh, and it was so funny because it kind of like ties into what we're talking about because my client um, said something very racist to me about somebody on the other side and he used the n-word with me which I just I refuse to say and he was like you just know how they are and this is a client I had spoken to on the phone several times but had never met in person and I'm like hold on he just said this man doesn't know he was like he was like was he was a white guy that just said a white man yeah he just said like yo you know how these niggas be yes 
Yeah. Like, how- and did not know. And as many times as I had spoken to him on the phone. He said this in your face? This was on the phone. Like oh, we, we had oh, never met. I in thought person. you were saying he did this in person. I was like, "What?" No, no, no. We had never met in person. So you were Ron Stallworth. She, he didn't know that right. you were black. And I mean, that's not what I was doing. But, <laughs> yeah, but, you know, but he didn't know. Yeah, and I was just kind of like, "Wow!" Like, first of all, like I've had numerous. I, mean, I don't know. I guess this just goes to the whole, you know, how your your voice sounds and like what a black voice is. But I'm like, did I ever say anything that maybe should have given this man the indication that I'm black and like, or maybe he knows and just doesn't give a shit? I don't know. Where's, where's he from? From, St. from here, from St. Oh, Louis. okay. I thought it might be like a, a national. Client. No, he's from St. Louis and popular business owner. Like I said, I got some attorney client privilege yeah, issues. Yeah, 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 but yeah. yeah, so that's the only time, and that's the reason he was pursuing the case too. So that made it really, really difficult for me because I'm like, this is what I think you should do. You know, let this go, and he didn't want to because you know how those n words are. So that's the only situation where I felt like, damn, like my my morals and integrity are like really preventing me from representing my client the way they want to be represented. Wow. Um, so no, I, I understand crazy. how that yeah. feels and like how hard it is. And you on one hand, you got a job and on the other hand, you know, you got yourself. So what do you do? Do you sabotage the case? Whew. Man, I might get that money, man. I mean, I just, you know, no, I, I know a part of me. It'd be like, I, I, I like make sure my check is cash. And I'm like, he did it. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Ray Carew who's getting out of jail. I just want to, I'm going to be doing, I'm, we, you know, I shout out to Ray Carew. Okay. I want to be the first interview and you get out, Ray. If you out there, Ray. <laughs> hey, Ray, Ray, holla at me and Matt. We we want to we wanna get you on you and OJ together in the same room. I'm How sure they are both that? listening. How would y'all love that America? You know, that would be if, really cool. So if, if there gotta, are any listeners out there with connections, yo, make this no, happen. Because I, I would love it. Interview, I just want them two on the mic uh, just talking to each other. Okay. About I don't Lord knows what. I got away with it. Just, you didn't know. Just set them up and like yeah, list, up. let it just go. Have them, let I got go. the mics. I just have them to sit there and they just gonna kick it. They, okay. Just, just kick it. So I was thinking um, long term about um, how as over overall how we look at. I'm trying to think what the like Ron Star of having to do that. As black people, we do that every day to a certain extent. What are you saying? Like where he had to. Um, oh, be in a position. Yeah, where he had to, pay, to protect um, David Duke. Oh yeah. <laughs> like yo, he had to protect David Duke. Like yeah. it is what it is. Yeah. You know, and it was just funny. He was sitting there like laughing. Have you ever seen the spook who sat by the door? No. Yo. Put I'll put that ab- watch that above plug love if you can. Really? Something like, goes above plug no, love. No, 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 no. Spook by Set by Door is one of my top twenty movies of all time. Okay. The book is dope too. It's basically about a black dude who infiltrates the CIA. No, he joins the CIA and he learns all these tools and brings them back to the hood to help the hood kids fight uh prejudice. That sounds interesting. So he 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 organizes all the gangs in Chicago to fight back against the man. Who's in this? Um it's the only person that you would know in this film. Is um one uh, his best friend that's a, the uh, uh, cop. Uh, he played um he played like a lot of bit roles in a lot of sitcoms. You would see him, you'd be like, oh snap, that's where he came from. But mm-hmm. nobody in there that you would know um, okay. offhand. All right, but it's a great film. It's All right, just s- send the list out to me and to the listeners. Yeah. So um, let me pull it up. So, but so, what do you think about like how we have to constantly? <laughs> Like, you know, like, it's like um, how um, Chris Rock say when a woman's dealing with a man, you can't you can't uh, call everything on them. That's like playing uh, <laughs> a basketball with a retarded kid. You got to let some shit slide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we choose our battles every day. And I think in the political climate we're in now, people are having a harder time with that. Mm. And it's like, it's like weird because it's like, it's emboldened almost, it feels like. Well, I think social media, too. Like, would we know, you know, in 1982, if Trump were president then, would we, would it be broadcast as widely as it is now that there are as many people as we know that are ignorant? Okay, so going back. So the dude that played Gina's dad on Martin. That's him. Okay. That's who's one. Of the, he's the only person that's pretty. Okay. Known in that movie. 
Okay. It's him. It's Gina's dad from Martin. And he's still not that known because we still calling him Gina's dad. Yeah, his name is J.A. Preston. To okay. be exact. But the main character's name is Lawrence Cooks. It's okay. a fucking phenomenal film. Okay. Um, but so like, I guess we do though, man. And we constantly got to sit there and like. But now it feels like a lot of them motherfuckers emboldened with this shit. Like, yeah, no. But my question was like, would we know if like not in the age of when social media wasn't is what it is? Would we? No, like the no. That I would assume people. that every white person was racist, though. I, like, okay. I'm thinking about like my mind in the '90s, mm-hmm. how I was. Like even when I was in college, though, I went to a liberal ass school in Iowa, mm-hmm. and I fucking gave them hell all the time yeah. when I wrote for the school paper. Like, yeah, I was like calling out people's names and shit. Yeah. Like, I was you know what? This is shit. true because I think if all I knew was what I saw on TV, I think I'd probably even be even more depressed than I am now because I think social media can also tell oh, you that there weird. aren't that there are some people that are on the good side too but what's weird is but would you be more because you gotta think if we were if you just put us 10 years in college of, of before then mm-hmm. we would have been in college during rodney king yeah latasha harlan yeah oj all that shit would have been going and think about my focus was watching oj like at like like all day yeah like I like that you apologized during one of your most recent episodes about <laughs> all the OJ up as much as we did. Because at the time, yeah, we, I was like, oh, we was I was riding. like I'm, I'm riding too, but why are we doing this? I was like, no, I was like, yo, he black. He ain't do that shit. But we out. <laughs> The, the glove don't fit. You must have quit. And now I look back like, man, we fucked up. See, I was just watching like, ooh, this black brilliant attorney. I'm just gonna yo, go with like, I was more Johnny a Johnny Cochran, Cochran supporter than I was an OJ supporter. And I even interviewed at the Cochran Law Firm. like Just because of that, you was like, <laughs> yes. yo, I want to be dead. Because Johnny, yeah. did Johnny pass by the time you had? Um, yes, he was. He, he just he, passed him, He right? passed away by the time I started practicing. Yeah. Right, So you, because you graduated law school in 07. 08, right? yeah. Oh, yeah, because he died in 06. Yeah. Yeah, the Cochran but firm. there are a lot of like Cochrane firms that I don't think yeah. are running in the way that he would. No, and bless, I think they're kind of like I think they kind of fell off though. Yeah, After he but passed, I, I, think I they still, fell still off. was just like that, like that's what I was watching. Yeah. Like fuck OJ, I was just like, dude, he's the first black known lawyer. Yeah, you can't tell me no. Well, black that's not lawyer. that's not true. Thurgood Marshall. <laughs> no, 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 I'm saying no. Yeah, no, no, yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. only other one you can you can. Clarence name. Thomas. I mean, there are a few I mean, others, on, but I mean, no, we can't talk about Clarence Thomas. Cause then we gotta talk about Kavanaugh. Okay. No, no, see, Claire, I mean Clarence Thomas is on the Infinity Gauntlet. You know, we got the Juice Santos <laughs> Infinity Fuckery Gauntlet. So it's different oh jewels of different slave black people. You know what I'm okay. saying? Okay. To make ju- uh, Juice Santos. OJ, you know, OJ came back. You know, he, he snaps his he snaps his fingers. And half the black women leave the world, <laughs> and it's only white women, and they turn to white women. <laughs> Oh they turn to white women. No, I think they just leave. They don't turn into white women. No, no, they turn to white women because that's what he wants. Oh, with the white women. Oh my God. They turn to white women. We, me and, me and, see, I got a whole bunch of questions for OJ. One uh-huh. last time he had sex with a black woman. Like, I want, like, I really have a bad one. I think it's 77. Well, when was the last time he had sex with a woman, period? He just, he just got out. He's having sex I, all the time. Okay, okay, so he just, I'm just saying, he's like. Been out since, he's been out a year now. He got oh, out last yeah, year. It has been a year. Damn. Yeah, that's bad. what I'm saying. Him and Ray Carew together uh, uh, <laughs> on 60 Minutes. Please, if somebody has any connections, <laughs> Let me this. make Let this me happen. It. Let make me this produce happen. the juice and the Carew face to face. Face to face? Yeah, the face to face. I think you just want to get him on the phone. No, they got to be face to face together. Okay. And I want okay. them to take pictures. We're going to put on Instagram. We make a Ray Carruth OJ Instagram account. These are big dreams, y'all. You only make can dream, it happen. Man. So, there's a, so oh, let's move forward to the movie if we mm-hmm. can wrap up in a little bit. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> the Klan ends up having this plot to try to take out the Black Student Alliance. My thing is like, yo, the Black Student Alliance, they couldn't be pushing as much weight, though. That's the, that's another that's another piece of the story that I'm like I'm sure this is not what they were focused on. Yeah, that all all that is made all yeah. that whole part with the the mm-hmm. the whole bomb thing all that is all made. Yeah, up. and that's why I'm saying like the real story is probably scarier. And I understanding I, I understand that you know they're trying to tell a story that's simple, but let's not do that. <laughs> Um, so they decided to do this bomb plot. We're going to blow mm-hmm. up the main girl, Patrice, who yeah. is uh, Ron Stallworth's girlfriend or ex-girlfriend. Or maybe maybe she's having sex with him still. I don't know. Um, this is eight, late 70s, <laughs> early 80s. You know? It was 
was all good. No what condoms. A, okay, wait, wait, wait. Do you think that they were ever banging? Of course. Okay. Why wouldn't it be? They just didn't seem to have like that deep, 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 deep connection. And go not, back to your this, original question. I've had question. not deep, deep chemistry with people who didn't have sex with them. No, but I'm saying like the way they even related to each other. I've had no relations with a woman at all. The way that, like <laughs> that they relate to each other in the film, no, like the chemistry is not I there. Had sex with women that I had no chemistry with, and that, I get that, but you can tell the chemistry. Like you can still see the chemistry, like with a woman that you have had sex with. No, mm. I will be in a room with a woman that I had sex with, and I'll tell you later on. You're like, y'all do that for real? If I had, if I saw you guys interact, I'd probably be able to figure it out. No, no, you wouldn't. Okay, fair. Maybe that's you. Maybe that's you because you're a unique individual. But so, I think okay, most shout out people, to Adrian. So you can tell Adrian that mess with that's that's your your best buddy. Yes, that's my you best friend. You would be friend. able to know if he had had sex with a girlfriend. I absolutely family. would. Yes, I would. He got some skills in that closet you may not know about. That. I Fall would out still there, figure stuff. him out. Like the, you know, them balls when you kind of hold that, uh, literally balls, because uh-huh. you're know, trying to hold up into the, uh, <laughs> in the closet. He got something that you don't know about. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you that you don't know about. Even if I don't know about it, I'm telling oh, you, if I saw if him interact with the with woman. But he's a flirtatious dude, though, so it's going to be but to I'm, me. It's, it's, it's a different kind of chemistry. I'm just saying, like, their chemistry was not sexual. It seemed like a kind of professional respect sort of relationship. No, when they were leaned up all up together in the booth and everything at the end of the film. And maybe, and maybe it was the actors, but I just didn't see it. Like, it was not my perception that they were, like, a heavily involved, like, romantic sexual couple. The way okay. I looked at it, and, and and this goes back to your question of, you know, how she responded when she found out that, you know, he was a cop. And I think that if they had had that connection, maybe she would have responded differently. Maybe the dick wasn't that good. I don't know. Maybe, that's fair, too. That is the absolute possibility. Do you watch Ballers? I don't. I don't. Oh, okay. Well, then there's a, uh, The Rock is having a relationship with Joy Bryant. Ooh, he- Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. With Joy Bryant. You know Joy Bryant. Yes, right? I do. She's beautiful, too. But, like, he's, like, you never have to see them at all, like, in a relationship, like, kicking it. Mm-hmm. But, like, at the end of the season, this season, he's got the phone and everything all depressed. But I'm like, dude, but you was, you only got, like, two scenes with her the whole season. Mm-hmm. Like, how are you, like, how is she, all, like, in previous seasons with other women, you had spent way more time with them. Mm-hmm. And you were not this heartbroken. Like, yeah. I'm trying to figure out, like. Yeah, and I don't think you need to see the scenes to know like they have. I'm just saying, like, I didn't walk away with the perception that they were fucking. I got, I walked away with the perception he was trying to fuck. Oh, wow. No, no way possible. I, I got more respect for Ron Stallworth than just <laughs> sitting around and not getting no ass. I have more respect for John Ron Stallworth. He didn't inf- infiltrate the Ku Klux Klan and not get no ass. For this, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> at some point. Okay. He had to, he had to have, like, the I'm getting ass energy. Okay. To get to, to, did to, they even show them kiss? Like I'm trying. Yeah, to think, they showed them kiss and stuff. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Maybe it, it it very well may have just been like the chemistry between, between the, the two, two of them, but that's not the way like I perceive their relationship. I saw it as like still budding, and it being complicated, and it could have been because you know there's deception piece involved. But there's a lot of movies that you know have that in there, and they still show the passion between them, and that's just not something I saw. So. <laughs> so the, the murder plot is on. Mm-hmm. They mess up with the whole bomb thing. The bomb is in the wrong spot. Then she tries to put the bomb up under her car. Oh gosh! You know, just the dumbass. Was that part at least real that the both none of, of them died? Real. None of that. Okay. Nobody died. No, none of that is real. Okay. Like literally from that that last eighth of the film mm-hmm. is all made up. So somebody, another character that I like hated but just thought was like a really good character was the felix character i mean he was so hateful and so no 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 the one that kept that he knew something was up oh the one that looked like he's italian but so you don't look like no the one the one with the fat wife oh yeah felix uh, yeah yeah yeah. uh, mike bashimi character um no no no. his name was something else. oh no, no, no the, mike bashimi is the main main yeah yeah, dude, yeah 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 no you're talking about the other dude that looks Felix, like the uh, one the one with the fat yeah. wife that you know knew something was up with with uh ron yeah and then you what what about the dude though back going back to the dinner that looks like he italian how did he get through uh, he looks like he's mexican italian about. or something are you talking about the main the one no that the, the dude that was like yo i know how to build a bomb or whatever and he was like he's the one oh he's the one that arrested me but he's the one that dimed out adam driver Oh, okay. He looked like he shouldn't have been there. Like, th- 
Don't even there look were, like an immigrant. Yeah, that like was an immigrant. Like, <laughs> how did he get past? I do know what you're talking about because I did peep that at the time. I'm like, that was just a casting choice. Like, that's yeah. yeah or maybe you're trying to show them like, yo. Like, well, I mean, Italians it. are still white. I mean, I'm sure pretty sure they're yeah, plenty of Italians. No, you know, you you're talking about like a fob. Aryan. No, but <laughs> KKK is pure Aryan. Though you can't have none of that. If you below the Caucasus Mountains, you can't. Well, be I mean, Adam Driver looks like he is. I mean, he. I don't know. Anyway, I mean, th- yeah. those are just casting choices, yeah, you know. They're, you do, do. Yeah, no, I'm talking about Felix, the the most uh, who I thought was portrayed as the most evil. Um, uh, yeah. So something interesting I read about that actor too is he's not American, and I always think it's interesting, like with the, when America when non American actors play like these evil American characters mm-hmm. when they don't have our history. And so I read something about him, and he said, you know, he's. I feel like. Europeans often have like a better sense of American history than mm-hmm. even we do. Of course, they got to learn it way more than we do. Right, and so he said that he, um, not growing up as an American, you know, he's done I think primarily Finnish movies, but he was saying that he learned how to play his role by watching how police treat black people, and I thought that that was wow. like pretty telling. Wow. Um. Well, well, damn. <laughs> yeah. So, so starting from what year? Because we don't right. History of that shit. Right. I mean, history repeats itself. Yeah. As you know, this movie shows. But I, I thought that that was pretty interesting. So they fight, they don't make the bomb. The bomb blows up and kills mm-hmm. all uh, Billy Bob and Felix and mm-hmm. the other dude. The uh, the dude that shouldn't have been there. Like, yeah. He's basically he was the affirmative action um, a member of the <laughs> of the KKK of Colorado. Um, <laughs> And my, like, and my whole thing is like, David Duke didn't give a fuck either. Though. Like, uh-huh. part of me was like, they ain't fucking up. They ain't gonna fuck up this corporate money, right? They're disp- I mean, every member is disposable. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, because sometimes, like, I don't doubt that David Duke believes his believes what he's um, advertising. Mm-hmm. But I think that like Trump, so much of his agenda is personal is not really about a whole people movement. I think he's just found a way to get in a particular group of people's heads. And he might not even, uh, sometimes I always think that he, he necessarily name races as he act like he just like, yo, I this think my he's pocket. definitely racist. But I'm saying, but yeah. as he's just in the pocket. Yeah. I'm in this pocket. It's moving. Right. Let me drum up everything I can with mm-hmm. this bass. Yeah. But I, I, I don't, yeah, I just he's green. I don't. He's green. He ain't no color. He green. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, and he even said that he has like a lot of respect for Ron and like considers him a friend and like called him up when this movie was released and told David him, Duke did. Yeah, like called him and told him his thoughts on the movie before and after. Like he called before and asked how wow, he was so going to be the gracious racist. Yeah, I mean, I, that's why I'm like he he believes what he believes and he has a reason for believing it. But so he's basically. What is the alt right dude that everybody? Um, oh my God, Richard what is Spencer. His name? Yeah, he's basically the first Richard Spencer because Richard Spencer is the one you know talking kindly and using big words and college educated and mm-hmm. all that good stuff. Yeah, and, they know how to speak respectfully to people, yeah. and I think they can recognize talent where talent is, but they still have their hateful, evil thoughts. Like I think that's exactly what David did. And I wonder, is. If, going back to what you said about the dispensable, I wonder if they know. And we can. This is go towards the end of the film with the. Um, the montage at the end of oh, the great. of the uh, mm-hmm. Virginia um, statue uh, protest, the alt right protest, alt right yeah. protest mm-hmm. with the tiki torches um, from Walmart. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. Of how I wonder if those top line racists look at them as like kind of foot soldiers. Like I'm, I'm still separated from yeah. y'all a little bit. Like, but y'all gonna put in that little bullshit word for us though that I They're ain't gonna puppets. be involved in. They're and puppets. I'm gonna still go to eat out. I'm gonna go out to eat with Denzel Washington or whatever because or Kanye West or Kanye. No, no, no. I was just saying that they yeah. won't even let people know that they own even right. down with the all right. Yeah. They may gonna be hanging out. With black people don't be like, but mm-hmm. you know, just like just like there's there's black people that probably fund like black um terrorist extreme organizations too though that you they just don't like yo check it out man i'm gonna give you all 100 grand though for this organization mm-hmm. not terror black terrorists but like may give 100 grand to like black lives matter or something but y'all can't say i gave y'all the money though kick that out to y'all y'all make the movement pop uh-huh yeah same way with them though mm-hmm. yes i have no doubt and that end of the movie was sad that like literally you could hear a yeah. pin drop in the theater yeah when that after that's that in the part, because everybody's laughing and like ah that's yeah, because I after he called him and called crack or some 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 I'm black blah, blah I, that phone call I was like 
you just ruined this whole movie for me. And like, then, like, I'll, with the whole, like, ending scenes with the the, the real scenes from the alt-right I had never, I had movement. never seen oh. that footage. From I had seen the, uh, some from, of it. From that, uh, from that situation. I had never yeah. seen that visual. Yeah. Yeah, I don't footage. think I had ever seen, like, a lot, like, the... I mean, we all saw the saw the images with I'm forgetting the woman's name who they dedicated this to. That's awful. Um, oh, we have Heather yeah, Heyer. Heather That's Heyer. her name. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had I had seen like the footage of like the car plummeting through the crowd, but a lot of that other like just hateful, hateful stuff I hadn't seen either. Um, yeah, and so that that brought me back in where I was kind of like, okay, I see what he's trying to do. Um. And it, I mean, it's sad. It's like the, really it, it devastating bummer. that, yeah. like, how did we get back here, I, well, or did we ever leave? That's you that's know? my other question. Have we always been here? And are we just Obama years, though, man? Like, I think it really kind of glossed us over, though. We needed Trump to a certain extent. I know it sounds fucked up to say that, but like, it's almost like you got to be like, never forget, like kind of like the Jews are mm-hmm. like, never forget, like, you know, and never forget in you are where ways, you are. OK, so thank you for the reminder. I know there are some <laughs> ignorant people out there, but can we not have one that's in power? Like my biggest fear has now come to light that he would put somebody on the Supreme Court because he's done in a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Kavanaugh is on the bench until he decides to retire or dies. I mean, and that the, is, yeah. I mean, but then what you call it, what's the, the, uh, the, uh, was it the, the ugly looking, um, um, woman that's on the Supreme Court, Greenwich or Gaynor, Boehner, the woman Who? that's on the Supreme Court that's not attractive. She looks real <laughs> fucked up and pruney and like, but she's dope though. She did, she has some great briefs. I read a lot of her briefs on everything, her decisions. Ruth yeah, Ginsburg? Ruth, there we go. Don't talk about my girl like that. Yeah, you know, she's not attractive. I looked at her old Don't talk too, about, I'm not I even, make sure that I wouldn't I'm just not even trying to older. acknowledge I did, I that, make sure. th- that that's who you talking about. Yeah, I want to make sure. So I went back and looked at old pictures before I even. She talked. was about to retire and she was like, no, she said, no, I'm going to hold on. She did. She was like, I'm old. I was ready to I'm go, gonna but show, I'm going to hang yo, on. Yeah, I'm going to hang on. I'm y'all need to go and get this election popping over for 20 Y'all going to give Ruth a stroke. <laughs> I mean, Kavanaugh's in now. It's. I mean, he just replaced Scalia, so it's like, really, just traded up. I, I mean, Scalia, you talking about? Scalia, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, oh my gosh. So, oh my god, I have so many thoughts on this. We could do a whole yeah, separate no, no, no. show, we got, but we, got, we, we could do ten more minutes though. Oh like, my you, goodness. The law, law, the law segment. Um, I, I mean, I think that because of the Doctor Ford hearing, he's vengeful. I mean, he gave you think a he's threat. Come hard? He gave a threat in that hearing. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Um Yeah, I I'm I'm scared. I'm just hoping Terrence Clarence Thomas dies within like two years. I'm hoping Clarence Thomas remembers that he's a black man Come in on, these man. years. Have you seen his wife? Forward. Have you seen the way he moves? He doesn't have any black friends. So his you I think like, he don't change sometimes? Too? I love reading like his concurring and dissenting opinions sometimes. He just doesn't give a fuck and you can tell it in the way that he writes, but I'm a, a nerd, so I won't yeah. I won't bore you like, guys is with it, that. No, but but is his briefs are they concise and no, legally good? No, 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 no. <laughs> They're they're was, comedic. So was he was he a he was an appeal judge before that, right? Or yes, like, yes. And he's he's con- he so know. like he kinda, so to become a Supreme Court judge is like mm-hmm. has there anyone jumped from like a regular judge to always Supreme Court like because most of the time you got to be like what a district federal judge or like an appellate judge I I mean I don't want to speak out of turn because I don't know the history of all I mean, judges back in the day, but you have had to a dude you met at the bar though and like, like you you, be a you have to be no and I, I I think that's like one of the only positions where there's like no age requirement no, it's not. Yeah. um you know or even like i don't even know if like you have to be a lawyer first i think like whoever no, there's wants some to appoint you that are not lawyers. yeah that you know anybody can appoint you so i don't know the history of all the supreme court judges but for the most part they're usually at least federal judges first um yeah and you know there were a fair amount of people that wrote in to and i'm not sure if this is like broadly broadcast because I, I read a lot of like smaller legal publications but there were a lot of like people that had judge kavanaugh as a ju- judge or worked worked with him mm-hmm. in the dc circuit that submitted um information to judge roberts asking him to review it and like we don't think this man should be a judge and he didn't look at it 
And it's just like all of these decisions are political decisions, like not about like how this man is going to rule on these cases or like his fitness to be a Supreme Court. This is just political. Like Trump wants him. We're going to get him in. We don't care about like what he is as a person. And that's the part that is really, really scary to me. And the Republican Party has basically said we'll vote for a puppy. Yeah, like that's what it is. Like it could be anything. Like whatever. <laughs> they, they said it, we'll it could be a turd, a and they'd be like, "Trump wanted." Okay, let's yeah. push that forward. We'll vote and for I'm a puppy. like, I don't understand. Like, how deep is he in this? Min- I mean, because I watched House of Cards too. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, did he threaten somebody's family? Well, like, you know, House of what Cards is, is going you know, on. You know, Republicans love House of Cards. You know, that yeah. Right? <laughs> you know why? I love House of Cards too. But, but you, no, you know they think that's the Clintons. That's what they. No, they think that that's the Clintons. That <laughs> no, go no, oh go, no. I'm dead God. serious. Go look on the conservative websites. They love. They think that's how the Clintons are. That that's how they operate. Yes, okay. they, that's that's the Republicans. What dream is House of Cards? They love it because they think that's the Clintons. Oh my God! Shout out to Kevin Spacey, though, man. You're not coming back this season. Man. They said you did. Or ever. <laughs> To anywhere. Yeah, man. Damn, man. You're a great actor too, man. Yeah, I like Kevin Spacey. But I like K Pax. Yeah. K Pax? That's what you came up with? I know. Out of all the movies, right? <laughs> man, usual suspects. So, like, legally, when you saw, like, the idea of the whole Virginia thing in general, mm-hmm. I'm not even legally, I'm just saying just your own opinion. And on mm-hmm. when you, when that first even happened, yeah. how did, what, like, I laughed because I was like, Yo, I've been talking about this shit, and y'all thought I was just blackity, blackity, black. And I'm like, yo, these motherfuckers have been dormant for years. Yeah. I've been on, and they call me a chimpity chimp. I was a chimp of the week on one of the sites, though, when mm-hmm. um when I had my blog popping and everything. Oh, no. I, was a, I was a chimp of the week. What did, and, what was your view? Uh, You know, I'm, I'm a nigga, so I was super, like, you know, I was going hard on, mm-hmm. uh, who was I going hard on? Uh, uh Buchanan. Mm-hmm. And I went on hard on Buchanan, and I went hard on um, what's homeboy from the Seven Hundred Club. Uh, he's doing Seven Club. He basically blamed the Haiti earthquake back then, or hurricane with an earthquake, a her- earthquake. Mm-hmm. It was a Haiti earthquake, earthquake was yeah. Back. On the fact that the Haitian people gave up their souls to the devil to get the French out of Haiti. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. So I went on Pat Robertson. That's his okay. name. Okay. Pat Robertson. Mm-hmm. And I went in on him. I went in on a couple other people. And, like, they was like, we found somebody. I chimp of the week. And they had, like, all my pictures and shit. Oh, wow. Like, on their message board. It was crazy. Like, they were oh, going shit. in on me. Like, they went to my Facebook. They did all Ooh, that I'm shit. Oh, I'm about to Google this. I was the chimp of the week. Oh, my. Chimpity chimp of the week. This oh. is 2010. Oh, wow. Damn, I was the chimp. Was it 2010? 2011. 2010. Okay. Like, chimp of the week. Oh, Wow. Okay. Yeah, man. So I know that. That so I start watching. I'm like, yo, there's a whole section of these motherfuckers that have been found each other on the internet, and they just like all these little small cells of these fucked up people have found each other on the internet. Yeah. Like incels too. You know what incels yeah. are, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They they got a whole crew. Yeah. No, I mean we know. Even though they said Mike Myers is an incel. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see how. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Mike Myers is an incel, but yeah. that's older. Yeah. But like. Did you like, was it an eye opening thing? I was like, oh, that's how. No, no, it wasn't. So I know that, I know that these people still exist. I'm not that ignorant. Like they're always, they're always going to be those people, but there is definitely a new energy that has been fueled within them to feel like, look who we, I mean, just like black people. I think like when, when Barack became president, like. You know, for the right reasons or wrong, it's, we have a black president in office. I feel like I they felt black people felt energized you know, too. You I know think race t-shirt white market people, made off of them Barack Obama t-shirts. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's a, I mean negative or positive, people feel energized by him. You know, and unfortunately, we have a president in office right now that is feeding this negative energy. So I'm not surprised at all. I never thought that they were gone. Um, what I would, because I, I'm, I'm kind of a strict constitutionalist, and I believe in the. Of course, you are. You're a lawyer. That yeah, makes I'm sense. not. I mean, not all lawyers are strict constitutionalists, but I think we have rules, and we have to live. You know, we have some guidance that we can go by, uh, and to some extent, like if that's their racist view, they have the right to voice yeah, that 100%. as long as they're not like Impeded physically on hurting anybody else. Let them go say what they need to say, and frankly, I'd like to know who you are. 
Yeah. And I, as, as hateful and as much as that hateful energy can create another hateful energy, I think we have to be careful. Um, you know, let them say what they need. They feel like they need to say, but don't give them any reason to be even more hateful physically or whatever. So I think we always have to be careful with our responses as well. Let me know who you are so I know how to deal with you. Yeah. But I'm going to be careful with how I display my response to you. And I think that, you know, all that bullshit Trump said, you know, there are fine people on both sides. That's ridiculous. But I do agree that there were some people responding with violence on both sides. And oh, yeah. These cats that was ready to go serve oh, people absolutely. on both sides. Yeah. And, I, and I get that response. I understand like, that oh, response. They, oh, I don't yo, know. It's on. Right, I don't know how you could not expect that response, but I just think we need to be careful because you see what could happen. And unfortunately, Heather Heyer was killed as yeah, a result then, of uh, it. Uh, there was like, what, 10, 15 other people injured too, right? Oh, yeah, there were a lot of people. I think there like, were more than 10 or 15. There were a lot of people injured. Like, yeah. Because, like, that dude, he's getting prosecuted, right? He's getting prosecuted, right? Um, he's indicted, I believe. I'm pretty sure if he isn't, I don't know what the fuck going yeah, on. Yeah, and Charlottesville, I think their mayor is black. Yes. Um, yeah, ain't no way they anyway, they make charge, and it's crazy because now we are reevaluating our history like we should have to though with this with the statues thing, like it's been this love thing for Robert E. Lee mm-hmm. throughout the South in general. I remember I almost got to a fight with a dude drunk um, back in when I was living in New York. I was down in Miami for work. And this dude had a Confederate flag T-shirt on. Like, I love Robert E. Lee, but he was mm-hmm. like buying me drinks, and I was like mad. But I was like, he's buying me drinks, so like I was in a like a fucked up position. And I was like, he f- is free, but I want to slap. Why the was shit he out buying you? I would be scared. Those drinks were spiked. How do you even get? Okay, so no, back we were, up. We were, at, uh, we were at uh like a regular Casa God or something. But I mean, like, how do you even get into the place where this? I didn't realize he had the T-shirt drinks. on too. Like after like two or three drinks, though. But I mean, too. like, how do you start this conversation? He's just we're just at the bar, all at the bar. Kicking. Okay. All right. Or whatever, and I um I just wonder like somebody that's gonna have on a shirt like that. What makes him want to buy you some drinks? Yeah, and then I was like, dude, I wanted to slap the shit out of you, man, but it's all good. Thank you for the drinks and everything. Mm-hmm. He's like, why do you want to slap the shit out of me? I was like, cause you got that fucking shirt on. Mm-hmm. He's like, why? And he's like, we're in the parking lot, and I was like, dude. He's like, no, man, let's talk about it. like, no, I'm going to slap the shit out of you in a second. And my coworker like grabbed me up, like, mm-hmm. no. Don't do, it. don't do it. Cause he was like, "Yo, I had never seen you that mad for real." Though. And I, I kept getting more and more mm-hmm. mad as the night progressed. More drinks, and I'm like, "This motherfucker in the bar, fucking, he's got mm-hmm. this fucking Confederate shirt on and shit." Mm-hmm. He's like, "Robert Lee was for the South and Southern pride." I was like, "Yo, I'm going to slap the shit out of you, dude." There are so many people that are so ignorant that do not know our history, that do not understand. That's the only piece of it that's been preached to them. I always look at those as opportunities to educate. I don't expect a whole lot out of it. I was 23 years old. I understand. No, I get it. I get it. I get it. But it's like you have to look for those opportunities to educate because as much negative as we have going on right now, I also see the stories of, you know, the people who were previously members of the KKK burning all of their shit. And, like, I met this person. I actually sat down and talked to them, and I've changed my perspective as a result of it. And so much of it is the result of ignorance. My fear is the people who are actually educated that have, you know, been around people of color and still hold those views. Mm. And Good point. and I and Good I point. don't and I don't think that they're part of the majority. I think that Trump said it himself. It's the poorly uneducated. And that's mm. who he went after. And he loves. them. Oh, he loves them. He loves them. But it's the ones that are like him that I'm kind of like. You have an education. You have experience. Does he really know? He has yes. I mean, he I does. know he went the pen. I know that, but yeah, I'm just no, saying, no, he does. He, really he does. Know? I mean, even or is like he, one of them people that was like, he Yo. has figured out how to game the system, but you have to have an education to figure that shit out. That's true. I mean, I, he true. has not he does flopped have a, he's his got way a, through yeah. all of this stuff. This yeah. shit is intentional. Yeah, all of this shit is intentional. So I don't think that he's a stupid man. I also predicted he was going to be president in 2015. For the record, if you go back to Australia, was it the I Simpsons too that predicted? Yes, it? but yeah. I predicted 2015 though. When I saw people chanting his name though. When Romney was running, if you there's videos, go back. Mitt to Romney would have been better than him. But oh, yeah. Mitt Romney would be. I, I kiss. I kiss Mitt Romney <laughs> right now. You know. You know. Saying? One of my biggest regrets is that during the previous election, oh, I another person's fault is uh, hmm. 
I want to add a fifth person before you even go into that. Oh, though. shit. Okay. Who? Who you think is a woman? Oh, God. She started the whole all right. Not all right. She started the whole tea party shit. I can see Russia from Alaska. Oh, Lord have mercy. Sarah Palin is at yes. fault, too? Yeah. Dude, she started the whole shit with the whole uh, the tea For party Kanye? shit. Kanye? <laughs> yes. Those are all why Kanye's fucked up, man. Oh, my God. All those reasons why Kanye's fucked oh, up. God. All of them, man. All those people have affected our man. Uh, they may have been fuel to the fire, but I think nah, Kanye, man, Kanye, number one, is the. I mean, he already said he's off his meds. But he said now nah, he's not. He said he was misdiagnosed. Do you see that? No, today? he's. I thought he said he's, that no. He, no, he said today fine, he's, he's like misdiagnosed. he said he that the medical system messes you up. That's they because he's off his me. meds. <laughs> <laughs> That's because he ain't on the meds he need to be on. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I mean, and then I think Snoop Dogg actually talked about it that he does not have a positive black woman in his life. He doesn't. Dondra's gone. I mean, he doesn't have. I mean, like, imagine if you were to say something like that on this podcast, how many black women you have in your life. Like, damn, what the fuck you talking about? Yo, the motherfuckers be coming through the computer right now. We ain't even put it out. Right. Like, yo, I heard you. I heard you say something like, yo, I ain't even put out the episode. I I woke up and I felt feel kind of way. My grandma come. I felt some type of way. Some of the spirit moved me. There's that film that's like a day without a Mexican and they show how, like, shit falls apart. I want them to do a film like a black man's life without a black woman and it's like Kanye's story right now oh like serious it'd be clarence thomas story too <laughs> true true i was about to say uh ben carson but his wife is black but some i actually she wrote an article herself, like so. an underground article uh-huh. and this is in the, we're in the trust tree here uh-huh. i actually this is this is horrible that i said but it's leaning back though it's like very bad though and i, and I apologize to uh clarence thomas's daughter i was like i want to go fuck clarence thomas's daughter just because so we could see some black dick <laughs> Oh Jesus Christ! Oh, it was horrible. It was, it was underground paper. It was you might need paper. to edit that out. No, 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 no. I was no. I was I was twenty years old, man. Look, man. Fair enough. Fair I was twenty enough. years old. I was rambunctious. <laughs> I was, and it, and it's it's only a few people read it. It was like on my Geo Cities website. Remember Geo Cities? Oh, yes. It was on my Geo Cities website, oh and that's gosh. been scrapped. So there's no way possible you could figure this out. Okay. Um, okay. Let's say some graphic things about Terrence Clarence Tom. I really despise him. Period. Yeah. Even though I love Herman Cain, though. I know that sounds. You know, did I ever tell you I went to a Herman Cain meeting? No. I went to a Herman Cain planning meeting when he was running for president. Okay. They loved me too. Like I went there, they were like, "Oh my god!" It was like maybe twenty people there, and they were like, "Twenty people." <laughs> <laughs> no bullshit. It was like twenty people, and they were like, "Oh my god!" They were like, "So you gonna come help us volunteer? Go to door?" I was like, "Nah, man, I'm just here. I'm just here. To see what y'all talking Check it out. about." I like. I, I wanted to see about this nine 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 thing he got going on. You know. I thought it was like a pizza deal, like nine, nine, nine. <laughs> it's he, not like a phone sex it, line. It was, dude. but it was, you know, he was the CEO of Godfather's Pizza. So I was like, so we're going to get nine pizzas. So if you tell me I get nine pizzas a week, <laughs> nine, nine, nine percent of my taxes taken out, oh, <laughs> nine man. months of the year, I might have to vote for Herman Cain. Well, Big okay. Daddy Herman Cain, as I call him. It's a strong campaign. Message so overall, there. you gave this movie three and a half stars. Yes, I did. Thank I y'all did. for listening to three, three and a, I'm going with four. I'm gonna go with four. Okay, I'm gonna go with four. That's fair. One. Thank y'all for listening to our first episode of the Untitled Review Podcast. We'll be here twice a month. I like that. Twice a month. All right. I Maybe will... more if we we got if it's some. Sh- we, we I'm getting us more exclusive shit in general. Maybe more. I don't know. I will. Raven. Tr- Raven's. A, Raven's. Raven's a superstar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. And I travel for work too. So you know. Well, I will do my best to watch Plug Love. Plug Love, man. Very soon. We have another review we'll be doing soon that we're going to see the, the premiere for that next week. Yeah. So Plug Love had to wait. And the other original movie that we pro- I promised people they were supposed to do tonight, <laughs> I won't say that either. We'll have to do that as well okay. when, you know, you get, you know. Because it was so crazy before we get off. I knew you weren't going to finish, finish when you are like, yo, I'm going to watch it today. I was like, Just, I mean, do not believe like, him in, subs- in suspense. Yeah. I was like, she ain't gonna finish this shit. Whatever. Yo, He's talking about the Bobby like, Brown story. <laughs> He's talking about the Bobby Brown like, story. Yo, uh, I ain't gonna finish this shit though, yo. You wanna do yeah. another movie? I'm yeah, like, yeah I'll Black get Clansman. to it. But it, you know, shout out to Bobby Brown. I went to the. Um, yeah, it's we not. The, it's we, not new edition. The but RB, yeah, RM concert. Yeah, you heard so about Ronnie the side, Bobby. You heard about Ricky. the side chick suite, right? The what? You got listen episode. We found out it's a side chick suite at the Chafis. 
There was one. Oh, okay. There was one suite. It was the only one lit up. These are all and married men. See. I hope they didn't have no side chicks in there. No, 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 not for them. I'm okay, talking about good. other dudes taking women to the show. Their oh. side chicks in the suite. It was oh, one. It was okay. only one suite at the shape is open. Oh, I see. And it was lit up, and you couldn't see them for real. Yeah, because nobody can see them. They're and not gonna get like, caught on that camera. Oh snap! <laughs> and then Matt also said that the side chick suite is a place of mine, and it moves like come long. long. <laughs> oh my goodness! It moves all around. Uh, yeah, the side chick suite, the RBRM concert. Yes, yeah, so it was a great concert. I thought Bobby did. A, I didn't. Bobby's know Bobby's voice I didn't know like sounds like old Bobby voice. He lo- he was good. He wasn't like keeping up with the dance moves like the rest. Oh of no, the he was like fuck that at some points. He, he was, had like, that old man arm. Where it's like it's barely working. This is kind of. You gotta think he had a stroke though. He had a stroke. Did he? Oh, okay. I guess I need to watch the story. Oh, I don't he know. had a drug stroke though, right? Not like an old. It's man. still a stroke. I get it. I a get stroke it. is a stroke. It don't Fair matter. Enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. But um, no, but he did. He held his own. It was an excellent show. Excellent show. So if it's and coming, we find to that's your why city, his mouth is it. like all like this. Okay. That's why he started talking with the little side mouth because okay. of stroke. Remember before he was he was like, oh, it just happened. You find in the movies because he had a fucking drug stroke. That's why his mouth, and it makes sense mm-hmm. that his mouth would be all crooked in the way he talks. Yeah, because he fucking had a stroke. That's yeah. how people already had a stroke. Like, yeah, they have some facial paralysis. You know, Whitney had the greatest, greatest PR people ever. Though you'll see yeah. that in the movie as well. Oh, yeah, I, I've heard lots of stories. Did you get the so day one at least? It. I did not. Oh well, I you're fucking know. far as fuck. I Mother know. Me. That's why I said, Daryl, I ain't gonna make it, man. <laughs> I will get through it at some point though, because Bobby is worth it. And Bobby's we'll dope. definitely review it. All right. Thank y'all for listening. Email is LandoCalPod at gmail.com. You can hit us up on everywhere online. Do you want people to hit you up online or no? Sure. You can hit me up, Raven Akram. It's my name. You can Google me, but you can uh, email me at R-J-A-K-R-A-M <laughs> at gmail.com or hit me up on Facebook. All right. The Instagram is the same thing? Instagram is Ms. Culture. I got that handle very early. M-S-C-U-L-T-U-R-E. You know, search for that shit for a grip. Yeah, Has I anybody know. tried to hit you up by trying somebody to buy Somebody did. Somebody tried to get it. Oh, somebody tried to buy it from you? Um, not buy it, no. She just asked if she could have it. I, she has some story, but no. So Ms. Culture. Was she like, like a big-time sounds. person? I, nobody I knew. I didn't spend much time trying to figure it out. I was just like, no, nah, bitch, it's mine. <laughs> figure, but you better spell Miss with a Z, bitch. And keep it moving. <laughs> right, no. So Ms. Culture. All right. Thank you all for listening. As always, we will be back two weeks.